Greetings and salutations, enemies of Arch. As we are returning to more goddamn power washing simulator. Why? Why? I'm actually... I am genuinely confused as to why this joke is still alive. And yet here we are. Uh, Alright, well, we are uh, taking a slight deviation from Space Marine equipment today, so... Uh, that's nice, at least. We have ourselves a thumbnail as well now, since we're doing it again. We have the Wet Sister t-shirt contest. Those of you who demanded that. Sadly, we don't have sisters singing in a choir in the background. Although, now I'm tempted to go look for a... for a copyright-free music video of sisters singing. Actually, hold on a second, that's a very good idea. Hmm. 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 Nope. 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 That looks deeply perverse. Nope. 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 Hmm. Turns out that there's a disturbing lack of female choir music out there. Oh well. I remember that now. That button's turned on the thing permanently. Maybe I'll look for it afterwards. Hmm. So this is a Rogal Dawn battle tank then, which is a recent addition, only a few years old I'm pretty sure, as I'm presuming Dawn got, well, uh, jealous over the Lehman Russ battle tank, one must presume. Kadia? Uh, Kadia. Ah, oh, God, Kadia. It's always the goddamn Cadians. It is, I. Ultra Smurfs, Cadians, Dark Angels, oi. Why can't we have something cool? Blood Angels, at least, something interesting. Death Corps of Krieg, Steel Legion, something. No, I gotta do the most basic bit shit imaginable. Look at Space Marines and Cadians. Help me. Hmm. Bit more muddy this time. I like that. Last ones were all infected by. Ooh, oh, foot, no oh, footies, no oh, footies. <laughs> I feel like this is slightly too tall for effective firing, but okay. Well, footsie stepsies. This is a very large armored vehicle, incidentally. I mean, look at me. I'm tiny, next to it. Then again, I might simply just be a diminutive servant of the Omnisire, So there's that. Hmm, at least they picked a nice classic color scheme for it. Damn, now, now I really want to find female choir music. How on God's good earth does one spell choir? Help me. Ah, that is not how I expected that to be spelled. Choir. Choir. Do you have choir music, YouTube? Choir music? You don't have choir music. The very least, you have no choir music I can use effectively. Five minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Oh, huh? Nope. Damn. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, no. God damn it. Right, you're gonna have to suffer without the choir music, chat. There doesn't seem to be anyone who makes choir music these days. I guess we pretty much stopped doing that during the, oh, I don't know, 1500s or something, presumably. Next gone first pop of tea. You need to wash an alpha rust. We didn't do that after Rax. The special edition. Lord Equista wants us to just march on to the next high fleet. Well, no point in wasting a bunch of good honest Kree guardsmen, is there? Sitting around, doing nothing. Uh, Owner has been member for 12 months. Thank you very much, sir, for your very long-term support. Another 12 months and you can call yourself, you know, a proper, proper Archcast person. Yes. We go by long periods here on this channel. Oh, no, the little rivulets. 
I remember the little rivulets on the land raider. I did not enjoy the existence of the little rivulets. The little rivulets require more cleaning than I'm entirely happy with or comfortable with. Next on the first poem T also says, Pity the Cadian, for they aren't Krieg. They aren't. Toey things. The little toey things are very useful in case you need to tow things. In case you were wondering. Right, actually, you know what? I learned from last time. I go up on the tower first, and then I put on the long thingy, and then I put on the slightly wider thingy. There you go. Look at that. Actually, hold on. There, Amy mode. Yay! Beautiful. Look at that. We're learning. I am learning. I have, I have lost. This is a beautiful thing. Experience slowly accumulating. Supposedly, the lore of this tank was that it would be ridden out almost immediately after it finished washing by a commissar. Which makes me question many, answer. many things. <laughs> One, why is the commissar waiting for his tank to be washed before leading his troops into the fields? I feel like genuinely that would probably be uh, a bit of an issue. See, the Cadians may not be, you know, proper Krieg's guardsmen or anything, but they do take their their discipline and their dedication to the God Emperor relatively seriously as well. And the new Commissar being like, hold on, lads. I gotta wait for my fucking tank to be washed up first. Might not sit well with them. I don't know, just, just a thing to consider in the future, I think. I feel like they might take it poorly. Oh, who knows? They could be a feet Cadians. You know, non Kazakhin Cadians. This wasteland Cadians. So practically just not even that different from Canadians at that point. Exhaust armor emblem. See, the, the commissar is very particular about each part of his vehicle as well. One of the fluffy Canadians. Commissars. Canadians? Commissars? Cadians? There are too many C's involved in this. Dominators! I see, he's got a little bit of a fetish too, eh? Hmm. Fair enough, we all need fetishes here and there. Well, that's, that's fine and fair. Never trust a man who claims to not have any deviant fetishes. Seriously. Commissar of France. Ah, France. Yeah, yeah. You can tell by the name, can't you, that this is not a... This is not a commissar's commissar by any stretch of the imagination here. Definitely not. Give me the even harsher thing. There. This is no Commissar's Commissar. This is no Ibram Gaunt. This is his fat, useless friend, uh, Blenner. Was it, was it Blenner? Was the, com or was the other Commissar named Blenner? There was Hark, who was kind of cool. And then there was Lud, who I actually really like. I wish we got more out of Lud. Yeah, it was Blenner. It was definitely Blenner. Uh, Midriel, one hour Gregorian chants. See, that's not a bad idea, actually. One hour Gregorian chants. That's not a terrible... That's not a terrible idea. I feel like it'll eat my monetization, but you know what? Screw it. Uh, Alright, ex... Uh, wait. Prepare to have your ears blown off as I adjust the volume. Yep, yeah, that works. That works. There we go. But yes, I'm pretty sure it was Blender. Blender was the useless commissar, the shitty commissar. I think he died. Did he die? I think Blender died. I think he died. I mean, most of them fucking died. Not to spoil too much. I, 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 oh, God. Okay, so I'm still working on the the Sabbat Crusade World Series. I've pretty much got it, like, down now. I'm just still wondering about how to uh, edit it together and stuff like that. That's the main holdup at the moment. As I'm wondering what I can do with the editing, so I'm going to use it a little bit of test ground. But I've read through all of the books now, I've got it all done, I've got all my notes, etc. I've already recorded a couple episodes, actually. Uh, but I didn't... I was not a mass... That's just... That's not why I want it. 
I must admit, I was not a tremendous fan of the last book. Not going to spoil anything, of course, but I, uh, mm, ah. I really do feel as if uh, Dan Abner was just kind of getting sick of the entire thing at that point. It's like, don't want to do this anymore. Please stop. Stop asking me for any more of this shit. Don't want it anymore. Then again, he also apparently had like a stroke or something, so uh, can you blame him? Not really. Fair enough, you don't want to write about the dirty, filthy barbarians anymore. That's cool. Go write some stories about space wolves instead. Everybody loves space wolves. Or new gives 20 Archcast memberships. Thank you very much, sir. And everyone who received one should say a thank you to all new as well. Or new is being very generous today. Oh, builds. I do hate builds. I don't like builds. I mean, seriously, you could just take the belts off whilst we're doing the cleaning, and you can put them back on again. I mean, surely this is some other adept's job, correct? I'm never going to get it completely clean with the belts on. I mean, Jesus, I can't get to the rear of them. I feel like I this have, is a massive lost. oversight. Nah, I can use the hiccups wider one here. Why did you scroll, YouTube? Stop scrolling. Order has been home for 12 months and I forgot to actually read his message because I was confused by Blenna and Gregarian chants and other things. I can't deny that I did indeed ask for this. You did, didn't you? I don't understand. Alright, what shall we fill our days with today? I'm reading a fascinating book on the Prusso-Frankish War. There you go. You ask for power washing, you get an obscure piece of fucking history. It is what it is, chat. So, the Franco-Prussian War is a very fascinating conflict in many ways, because we had... We, we wrote so much on the Franco-Prussian conflict, like a truly absurd quantity of stuff. And yet now, it's completely forgotten about. Like, nobody cares. People don't even know what the fuck it was anymore. Like, the most lasting impact of the Franco-Russian War today is, I shit you fucking not, a Simpsons cartoon. I swear to Jesus, the whole Simpson, Simpson meme of the French surrender monkeys, that's pretty much from the Franco-Prussian War, okay? God, what a fucking tragedy. We've, remo we've reduced one of probably the most impactful conflicts in modern military history to a fucking Simpsons meme. Ah! Americans. I fucking hate Americans. They ruin everything, I swear to God, sometimes. If only Canada had won the American Civil War. The first one, not the second one. And burnt the White House down to the ground properly, instead of just, like, singeing it a bit. Fucking Canadians. You can never trust them to get anything right. Next is gone, the first pop tea. Uh, Pitted Katie for the Iron Creek. I did read that one. Red Fox Media says, when they say, get a real job, open power wash simulator. That is indeed a real job. Though I wouldn't mind having this as a job. Like, this seems, you know, relatively calming as, you know, a profession. Considering all of the awful professions out there, this doesn't seem like such a bad one. You know, you go around from house to house power washing things. I wonder what kind of a market there is for power washing, though. Like, how do you advertise that? You just go like, hi. Hello there, sir. Would you like me to power wash your driveway? And it's like, why would I pay you to have fun? Fuck off, dude. I got my own power washer. Oh. It seems like a lacking service industry. How are you not clean yet? Oh, because you've got dirt. There we go, all the way shoveled up in there. Scroll, scroll. Uh, retro video game, a 31 best Roman Catholic songs on YouTube. <laughs> Music might work. Mm, we'll see that after the Gregorian chants finish. I feel like I'm going to need to bust out the soap on the exhaust thingies, but... We'll endeavor with the washer for a little while longer. I want to save the soap for the truly niggling, fang-dangling bits that you just can't god darn reach I have, I have without... Lost. Shit. Oh, 
this is a pretty niggling fandangling bit. Okay, actually that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Oh, that was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. Huh. I was just missing the fact that I hadn't watched half of it. Okay, fair enough. Alright, well the ass part is nice and clean already, which is nice. That was rapid progress. Ooh, disgusting. Mr. Twisted Frenzy says, How about some Imperium music straight from Holy Terror? And then the YouTube link, probably leading to child molestation or one of those filthy prank channels. I don't want to click on that. You might send me to a Logan Paul video and then I might have to Roblox myself. I wouldn't want that. Jesus. I remember when I looked at the amazing digital circus because they were like, wow, this is really cool and stuff. And in PewDiePie, Markiplier, whatever, every everything that a just algorithm scraper would tell you to put in your video. And ever since, like six months thereafter, I am still getting fucking Fortnite videos suggested to me. Would you like Fortnite? No. Would you like some Fortnite ASMR? No. Would you like a Fortnite makeup video? No. Oh, fuck me. Fire is the answer. <laughs> the worst part is, for a while there, too, it killed all of my little channel recommendations. See, I've been quite enjoying recently how YouTube has actually been sending me small channels. I've talked about this before, but it sends me, like, channels with, like, 100, 200 subscribers. Like, would you like to check this out? And I'm like, yes. You know what, YouTube? I actually would like to check that out. 98% of the time, it is immediately made blindingly obvious why they have 100 subscribers and no more, but I appreciate the effort. YouTube probably should put a little bit more effort into, you know, uh, hyping up new channels instead of just simply hoping that Markiplier and PewDiePie live for fucking ever. And Mr. Beast at this point, I guess. Oh, newfangled YouTubers. Disgusting, truly. We really should just have abandoned, abolished YouTube back in like 2012 or something. Just shut the site down forever. I'm like, no, no. It's peaked. It's peaked, bruh. No more. I suppose that would have caught Total Biscuit's career somewhat short, which would have also been a tragedy, but hey, sometimes you've got to make sacrifices when you make arbitrary and completely unguided, willless decisions on the fly of the moment whilst playing a fucking power washing day game. You know, stuff happens. Reverend Norse, Orchestra, Female Choir on YouTube. Female Choir on YouTube. Yeah, these aren't women. That's the problem. These are men. I don't like men. Men are disgusting, sweaty, and gay. They are. That's the worst part. They are. By d definitionally, they're gay. I mean, they're monks, right? So they must be. And what else could they be? Huh. That's an interesting thought. Are monks gay? You know what? Yes. Yes. Monks are gay. I'm going to take a stand on this subject right now. Monks are gay. Because they swear off women. They're like, no. No females for me. Ever. If that's not gay, I'm not entirely sure what is gay. Okay, that's not enough pressure. Heresy for question. Fire is the answer. That works. Okay. Monks are gay. At least we managed to figure that out, so we've, uh, oh, right, the Franco-Prussian War. I was talking about that for about two seconds there, and then I was misguided by wondering whether monks are gay or not. Which they are, incidentally, again. If you forswear women completely, you are gay. See, even though I have long since embraced the truth that women are near universally evil, that doesn't mean I f swear off men. It just means I like evil women. Which is kind of unavoidable in this cunt world of ours. We do need more mentally deranged women, okay? Actually, honestly, genuinely, clinically insane females are simply just superior to the normal sane ones. This is one of the many problems with modern day society. Too many relatively sane by women standard females. But what we really require is some frothing at the mouth maniacs. You know, the anime kind that licks knives and shit. That. Or just cat girls, I guess. That works too. Visions of Escaflone. Now there's a thought out of absolutely fucking nowhere. There was an anime way back when in the 19s. In literally the 90s, I think. 
Visions of Escaflowny, or Flowny, or Flowny, or Flundra, whatever like that. Good anime, I actually recommend it. It's very old, but it's it's got that old, good animation style. Mecha action show. It has a little cat girl in it that is aggressively devoted to one of the uh, retarded mech pilots. Who, of course, is immediately like, no. I don't want cat girls. I want this random Japanese chick who arrived here via a fucking magical portal or something. <sighs> One of the many, many retards in modern day anime. We wander further and further from the topic of the Franco Prussian War, I notice. Gunfox 61 has been there for 12 months. Thank you very much for your extent. You don't scroll. For your ex extended service. English. Extended service. Arch, how is the law for Acarius Sector war torn between orcs and the bugs? I have, I have lost. Is that new? Um, have they done anything with that? I remember they mentioned that orcs versus Tyranids last I heard, which is a very long time ago, mind you. The Tyranids were winning, albeit extraordinarily slowly. And the Inquisition was starting to get worried that the Tyranids might eat a little bit too much orc and get a little bit too orky. Amongst other things, I believe they were getting worried that the Tyranids might somehow figure out how to eat the Orc's ability for, um, you know, changing the have, rules of lost. reality with psychic powers. Imagine that. Imagine if Tyranids would actually go faster if they were red. That would be very retarded and very unfortunate for the Imperium by and large. Speaking of a topic I wandered past like 30 minutes ago, Total Biscuit would have loved this game. I'm sad Total Biscuit is dead. Total Biscuit was the best of all of the review YouTubers by like a mile. I don't watch any reviewers anymore. Eh, partially because I don't really need to. I've pretty much figured out what my taste in video games are, but none of them ever got even close to scratching the itch that old TB did. Speaking of lunacy, why did you not take off the fucking stowed crates before you asked for a cleaning? Do you have any idea how fucking waterlogged this shit is gonna be? That's probably somebody's fucking luggage. That is somebody's bedroll I am hosing. Yes, stowed large cloth roll. I am hosing the fuck down some random poor guardsman's fucking bedroll. Okay, well. The Mechanicus cares not for your fucking sleeping convenience, guardsman. You will be cold, you will be wet, and you will be fucking miserable because the God Emperor says so. Now shut up and sleep in your waterlogged bedroll, bitch. Cruel and fucking unusual. Oh, hold on. Ah, fuel cats, yes. Large quantities of water and fuel mix really well, in case you were wondering. Just in case. In case you were curious. Shoto Li Yang, your rambling is entertaining. Well, that's good. At least I'm doing something right for the moment. Right, so, Franco-Prussian War. Let's try to return on track here. We've got a lot to cover. And ironically, we do have a lot to cover. So, the Franco-Prussian War came at a period in European history where there had been surprisingly few wars going on. And after all, Napoleon Bonaparte did his whole thing, um, Europe kind of quieted down for a while. Uh, largely because the various European powers were more concerned with dealing with uh, rebellions internally, you know, revolutions and shit like that, rather than worrying about each other. In fact, everyone was just pretty much concerned that if anything kicked off again, the various nations would be too weak to stand up to rebellious influences within their own country. Napoleon himself was actually a bit of a godsend in that regard, or more correctly, the Napoleonic anti-propaganda, or anti-Napoleon propaganda was the godsend. As if you look up, like, Napoleon-era propaganda, you'll realize that the Brits, in particular, developed a lot of propaganda back then. 
humorous propaganda as well, amusingly enough, like um, John Bull, I think his name was, was uh, one of the leading satire satirists of the time. I mean, fuck, leading satirist, one of the only satirists at the time. You know those dumb little commercials, not commercials, the little, uh, the little comics and like newspapers and stuff that draw uh, exaggerated pictures of political figures? A lot of that has stems from John Bull of that era. Where they actually managed to convince the general populace that people were worse off in France after the revolution and so on. And Napoleon Bonaparte himself became the beast of Europe. A boogeyman that could re that could unite all of the various powers. The, uh, the burgeoning middle class, the lower classes, the upper classes, etc. Uh, thus, Europe managed to stave off the dangers of revolution quite some time. But with all Nappy defeated, there was a genuine concern that this would no longer be the case. That the lower classes would yet again begin clamoring for, oh, you know, stupid things like food, clothing, freedom, the ability to not be slaves, etc. Crush the liberty against crushing taxes. Eh, minor, minor issues. Minor quibbles and quibbles. Shout out to Lian Yang. Your rambling is entertaining. I read that one. God help me. Ornu, speaking from experience, power washing and glasses do not go together. I would imagine. Get in there. You know, I don't like the way I'm stroking this thing with the the water jet. This feels this feels more homoerotic than I'm entirely comfortable with, if I'm to be entirely honest. Ugh, youth. Yeah, I don't like this one bit. Not one bit. Commissar Chaplain Radke, Mr. Clean is a demon of Slanesh. Stop summoning. I don't know about that. I think. I actually think Slanesh would object to cleanliness, if I'm entirely honest. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, stroke that long, hard barrel. Oh, disgusting. I always knew there was something gay about tanks. I just hadn't realized how. How the fuck am I supposed to get in there? You know, this might be a job for the, uh... The soap, unironically. If I'm even close enough for the soap to work, and it kind of doesn't feel like it. Alright, let's... I probably want to use most of the soap on the tracks. Still not entirely sure how the soap works. What? Oh, right. Like, does it make it easier to clean up? It doesn't really feel like it. Confusion. Uh, skeletal Commissar, I did want this. Thanks, Art. Well, you are welcome. Oh. There's a smudge over there that I haven't gotten. Rare armor. Mm, I don't like the presence of smudges. I don't like the presence of smooches at all. That's all. Fifty dollars. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I've seen ads at truck shops, stops in Sammy's town here in the U.S. And honestly, having done this before IRL, it can be trucker. It can be trucker than it looks because too much power, and you might erase a vehicle's paint job or damage someone's brick and mortar. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, that's a heavy fucking duty power wash if you start damaging brick and mortar. Good god. Paint job, though. Oh, yeah, I could absolutely see you peeling off the paint with something like this. Absolutely. Absolutely, dudely. I should finish off the homoerotic cannons before I move on, really. I'm just not entirely sure how I'm gonna, you know, get in here. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Alright, well, that works, sort of, I guess. 
I imagine the tech adept just hanging off the side of the cannon like this, like, must make clean. You know, the easiest way to do this would be to pass a cleaning rod up from the inside of the cannon, but, uh, yeah. Do it your way and make it as difficult as you conceivably can, Mr. Tech Adept. Nuclear Winter Gamer, if you haven't seen Space King yet, also would like to apologize for Eastern Canada and Trudeau. Western Can Canadians can't stand their bullshit. Well, that's good to know. I still haven't seen Space King. I'll have to get to it at some point. I was watching the um, the recent uh, TV show, actually, Samurai. It's pretty good. I quite like Samurai. There is still a piece of smudge here somewhere. There we go. Right. Tracks. And side armor and stuff. Mr. Fancy, oh god, that's the future, isn't it? 40k crossover with Fortnite. Why, Arch? Why is the mainstream a thing? Oh, it already basically is. Um, there was a, um, there's a Call of Duty crossover in the works right now. A 40k have, Call of lost. Duty crossover. And the models look atrocious. It looks like the cheapest, least interested, slapped together crossover you have ever seen. Like they just had some rando namby pamp intern go like hey you need like a 40k crosser for cod or something and it's like what's a 40k i right, just thing with like power armor and shit like google it bruh and he did and that was how it was created it, it looks awful And ironically, the sheer quantity of watering down that gw is doing to their ip worries me ever so slightly and ever so slightly. Mercer Holt, so much. Which Chaos Good would follow if you fell and why? Um. Zinch. Probably. Because Zinch is probably the most comfortable one. Yeah, sure, you gotta sit up all night scheming and planning and shit, which is a bit annoying. But you don't need to grow extra dicks. You don't need to get fucked by spike wielding demonettes with strap on dildos or anything. You don't have to scream at the top of your lungs as you charge lasgun positions. In reality, you can be a Zinchian follower by just sitting around drinking tea and eating crumpets most of the time whilst you plot on how to plant another flag somewhere. That's far more comfortable in the long run. Like, it's far more comfortable in the short run. Brian Isaac. The War of 1812 is a prime example for the Second Amendment. Come and take it. On a serious note, Franco-Prussian War versus Russo-Japanese War. The Russo-Japanese War is an interesting one as well. Um, I found an excellent book on that, which was really inspiring me to start digging into it as well. But, okay, to return to the point. The Franco-Prussian War. The... The big thing was, again, there'd been a lot of peace in Europe, and there'd been a lot of technological advances at the same time. A lot of technological advances. Uh, most of the European nations were still clinging on to smoothbore muskets for the longest time, until the, uh, the needle gun, the, uh, the Dreyer, the Dreyser, uh, was introduced by Prussia, who handed Austria an absolutely disgusting military defeat, uh, which, in which the needle gun absolutely dominated the remaining smoothbore muskets of Austria, which quickly made the rest of the nations of the world begin adapting breech-loading uh, rifled, uh, yeah, rifle, rifles, uh, breech-loaders as well, and instead of smoothbores. Side shield is still there. There we go. But despite that, there wasn't a whole lot of big wars. And the wars that did happen were fairly small, in large part due to the fact that, again, most of the nations were primarily occupied with suppressing their own populace rather than worrying about large-scale warfare. And if all you really need to do is suppress your own populace, then a small but highly elite and reliable army is by far preferable over a large group of random-ass conscripts whose loyalties might be, hmm, a little bit too... Uh, a populist, shall we say. Gotta be careful with that stuff. Can't let the communists get any political power or military authority. 
They get difficult to deal with when and when and if you arm them. I have I have lost. Multi melter, good choice. Uh, this also then meant that the actual large-scale warfare was not very well understood at all. Obviously, there were some examples, like the Second American Civil War. I will never stop calling it the Second American Civil War, because it was technically the Second American Civil War. Yes, rising up against your, uh, your British king was a civil war. Shut up about it. I will die on this hill. I will fucking kill myself on this hill if I must. There's been two American Civil Wars, and we're working on a third right now. McSwordman, your bedroll has a hole punched in it by high-pressure water. Sounds like not the Munitorum's problem, Guardsman. Indeed. You should probably have unstrapped it from the fucking vehicle before you handed it off to power washing, shouldn't you, you dumbass little Guardsman? Sunyard says, what strong opinions do you have on helicopters? I like the Apache 64D. It's so ugly it becomes beautiful. Also that dumb Blender Hellfire missile. Hmm, helicopters. I hate the Cobra. I hate the Cobra. I think it looks dumb. I think it looks stupid. I don't think it's a very good attack helicopter. And it just looks dumb. And I hate it. I just, I just kind of hate it. Like it's, it's have, just, it just, lost. it looks wrong. It looks feminine. It looks effete. I don't enjoy it. Now the Hind! Oh, there you've got a helicopter. MI-24 Hind is a beauty. It's big, fat, bulbous, aggressive looking, violent. It looks like the kind of helicopter who would NTR your dad and fuck your mom and then probably screw the pooch on the way outside the door. Yes, that's what a helicopter is supposed to look like. Ooh, the KA-52 isn't bad either. It's kind of like... If the Cobra was done right, you might have the KA-52. Because of the retarded nature of the double rotors. With the thop, 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 thop. Look, I have two rotors. Why do you have two rotors? Because then I don't need to have that little spinny thingy on my ass. Yeah, but having that is infinitely more energy effective and useful than having the enormous rotors requiring twice the amount of power to, to use two massive propellers. Oh, yeah, but Russian, though. Eh, sure enough. It flies primarily based on orcish power, I guess, rather than, you know, actual understanding of the laws of gravity. Why did 666? Ecclesiarchal doctrine dictates any woman must wear a simple white blouse when housing down vehicles of war, as it symbolizes cleanliness, a Gorgvandi order that has never been rescinded. I hope so. It would be an order that makes a lot of sense, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm already using that one. That's good. All right, that's a tent. I'll just hose that down too. Make sure that every single piece of personal kit is thoroughly waterlogged and completely and utterly useless in the field. Good. A side viewport. That's a cute idea. I like that. I mean, glaring and massive armor vulnerability, mind you, but I like the idea of it. Yeah, so that you can look out and see when you're getting t ambushed by an anti-tank team. Like, look over there! That's gonna hurt. They need pistol ports. That's what they need. You can't have a good tank without a pistol port or two. So the pistol ports were adorable little... I think they were... Were they German? Were they a German invention? I can't remember if I've seen it anywhere else, honestly. Where you would have a little, little like, round thing on the side of the turret, uh, which was basically a cork in the armor, which the crew inside could punch out the cork and then just push out a pistol. Uh, that's the name. Pistol port and shoot at attacking infantry. No one ever, no one would ever claim to uh, say that it was effective or a, you know, a useful addition necessarily, but it was an addition and it was kind of cute. And of course, it, well, it couldn't just be a pistol. You could pump a little uh, MP40 out there, you know, hose out some bullets, 
hoping that the sound of a weapon firing might dissuade anyone climbing up by you with a giant bundle of stick grenades or dynamite or something like that. Track armor. What pack of the track armor isn't clean? Ah, probably that bit. Yes, that was the bit. I must admit, the Gregorian chants certainly do add to the experience. Makes it more relaxing, Yun. As a correct level of worshipful of reverence to the whole procedure, you know? Kinda like it. Counterstructure, you are a human. Use all tools. The two-story platform is movable. Mm, is it? Oh. <laughs> okay. For some reason, I didn't expect to be able to pick that up. I don't know why. But it's far better to just be a monkey and climb out around on the tank. It's vastly superior to using tools. Front melty gun. Is that a Punisher Gatling cannon in the hull? Huh. Oh, Castigator. Close enough. Oh, that's an interesting addition. That's... That's some pretty serious fucking point-blank range defenses right there. Okay, excuse me. Are, are those... Are those... They can't be. Yes, they're melty guns. They're front-mounted melty guns. Okay, so we've got... <laughs> Twin-linked side melty guns on both sides. A Gatling cannon in the hull, two melter guns in the front hull, a battle cannon, and an auto cannon. I feel as if the GW design document for this thing was simply just mm, guns. We, uh, we require something blindingly obviously overpowered to sell our new model kit and really increase this quarter's earnings a little bit. Could you come up with something like that? Ah, oh, trust me, bruh, I got an idea. We just cover it in guns. Guns in the front, guns underneath it, guns on the sides, guns on top of it. We just make it a gun tank. That's too fair. Eh, all in all, one of GW's lesser, lesser balancing crimes. I remember there was a Mechanicus, um, back when they used doctrines. Uh, there was a Mechanicus doctrine that required you to have so and so many units that pushed you just beyond 2,000 points in like 2,225 or something and it gave you just the most ridiculously abusive powers ever and since they made sure that it was just above 2,000 points you know that they did that exclusively to try and get people to buy it without ruining every 2,000 point game in existence I bet you there was a lot of people down at the local gaming store that were like, Preach, could we pay 225 points? Now you're playing at Eptus Mechanicus, aren't you? Yes. Then go ride a dick, you fucking whoremongering piece of shit. I believe that was probably the general gist of the conversations that occurred there. If anything, they were probably significantly less civil than that. See, there are some people who play 40k to win. I don't understand those people, and I think they should go away. You shouldn't play 40k to win, you should play 40k to do something dumb. Like building an orc army that does nothing except shooting. Or a Tyranid army that does nothing except lost. shooting. That's actually kind of funny. Unironically, it's actually somewhat pseudo-viable. Yeah, not in a competitive sense, but... In a, I didn't expect the Tyranid to pump out that many fucking shots kind so of sense. Like, I've got pretty great armor saves, I bet you can't get through it. Oh, you bet so, do you? Well, this one unit has about 22 shots. Per model. <laughs> Seriously though, 30 Thermagons with special, like, assault barbers, etc. Or the little spine fisty things with, like, three shots. Mmm, adorable. Uh, another Texan Bull says, you can move the tower around. I've discovered Service that now. It's a piece of information that I now have that I did not have previously. Thank you. 
Sajad, Marty McDonald, the whole the Halo composer is running for office. Star Sector. Ah, oh, God, Star Sector. I do need to play that at some point too. My first priority is Hi-Fi Rush because I got to get that out of the way because our Gray uh, funded that entire game by himself, practically. So I've ordered the thumbnail for that, and then I need to actually learn Star Sector, which is going to require me finding enough time to play and figure out how it works. So, uh, in the future, with the future in this case being an extraordinarily nebulous definition for not today. I prefer the, uh, okay, there's an excellent Spanish word. The Spanish word is manana. Now, manana, strictly translated, I believe is supposed to mean tomorrow. It does not mean tomorrow, however. Manana quite explicitly means not today. That does not carry with it any sort of explicit promise that it will happen tomorrow, or that it will happen the day after tomorrow. It simply states that it will not happen today, and that is all it means. It's a beautiful word, because it's used primarily against people who don't know what the word means, because, especially against Norwegians, I, 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 I imagine it's incredibly useful, because you, you just go like, tomorrow, like, not, not t tomorrow. And people are like, oh, you're coming by right tomorrow, manana. Like, okay, I'll wait for you tomorrow then, and tomorrow comes, like, manana. I said banana, but doesn't that mean tomorrow? No, it means not today. And you can do that quite a lot of times, too, because Norwegians are rather gullible creatures. And ironically, we kind of are. See, we Norwegians live in what we like to call a high-trust society, which I know most of you don't understand what is. You've long forgotten it, or you've completely ruined it by mass immigration. But when we hear somebody say something or promise to do something, we consider that to be pretty much, you know, Harrison sacrosanct. You, uh, you've obligated yourself to doing that thing now, no matter how annoying it is. And if you don't do it, you will ruin your reputation and people will come to your house and yell at you and throw tomatoes at you. Oh god, unironically though, Norway Norwegianism is a fascinating thing. I need to tell you all about Jant and Oven at some point. It's a very, very Norwegian thing. That on the one hand I vehemently reject, and on the other, very, very much so embrace at the exact same time. Which might be a confusing stance, but I hold it nonetheless. I knew you wasn't clean, you old piece of shit. There we go. Nice and clean track sections. Actually, I can probably use a wider thing here. Uh, Dark Resurrect. According to the right of tank washing, using the right of scaffolding is amount to tech heresy unless you have a Magos Blessed. I believe so as well. I don't believe I have any explicit ex uh, you know, powers to move the scaffolding, and so I'm not going to move it. I am not going to make assumptions above my stations, because that way lays the route to tech heresy. If the Magos wanted me to use the scaffolding in some other, other part of my cleaning, he would have left the scaffolding to cover some other part of my cleaning procedure. If he did not, clearly it was not intended for that. Obviously enough. Clean, 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 I wonder if this is easier than the Land Raider simply because I know a little bit more of what I'm doing now, or if this is just actually easier, but still not as satisfying as the Dreadnought, I will say. I have, I have lost. Brian Isaac, give me the MH-47 Chinook. See Operation Mount Hope. Ah, the Chinook. The Chinook is pretty retarded looking. I don't mind the Chinook. It also look at least, it looks at least a little bit hostile, you know? It looks like your retarded cousin that tends to get a little bit frisky around the holidays. Which might not, might not be the correct kind of aggression, but it is a form of aggression, and that's good enough. Mm 
Ting ling ting ting. Uh, Brownie Berserker uh, 3, I think. Berserker. The real question Lehman Russ or Malkidor? Which is the sexier quad guard tank? We ignore the Rogaldorn's existence. Uh, Malkidor, obviously. Because the Mal Malkidor is just very large and very retarded. In fact, I believe the Malkidor theoretically, technically, qualifies as a super heavy. Or is there really something in the same general sort of ballpark? Particularly when you mount it with the twin enormous Gatling cannons, that's pretty cute. And the Rogaldorn is gay. I don't like the Rogaldorn. I have determined that the Rogaldorn does not deserve to exist. Having washed most of it, I must, might as well actually use the soap. Nice. Where's my soap uh, counter? Am I using it? Oh, I don't have any soap. Okay, well that explains why it wasn't working very well. I was like, why well, this? This doesn't seem to be doing what I expected it to do at all. Yes, that's because you don't actually have any soap. That's why. I had Magos determined that you didn't need any soap. Once again, we do not ask any questions about why the head Magos decided you didn't need a tool. To do so would be tantamount to treacherousness and heresy. As I crawl around on the ground to polish off the last few track wheels. I have, I have lost. Hmm. That's going to be a fandangling one. Let's get clean, you abomination. There. Right, uh, what's left? Multimelter Sponson. Alright, probably on the top. So very, very nearly clean. Do you really need to clean the smoke launchers? Clean their insides? Alright. Uh, what is left now? Uh, that one. Okay. There you go. Get clean, get clean, get clean, get clean, get clean. No. If only water was a liquid. If the water was a liquid, it could run down and clean it regardless. But water is sadly not a liquid. Water does not run. Water does not move in any way. Water is a 100% static object. It only goes out. Nothing else. Never anything else. There we go. Main turret armor. Service now. What do you want me to clean, video game? I'm confused by your insistence that I'm not done yet. Ah, gotta watch this behind too. Right, there you go. Anything else? Huh? 
Ah, one of the cantinas wasn't entirely clean, apparently. Very pedantic of you. Got individual cantinas. Now what do you want? What do you want from me, game? Oh, exhaust pipe. That one exhaust pipe there, I doubt it's not sparkling quite as much as I would like for it to. Happy now, Magos? No. There's still something you're missing. What? The rear bumpers are clean, the stowed fuel drums, exhaust pipes, tracks, side armor, side shields. Where is that handy dandy list that happened last time? Oh, track adjuster. Because that was nice when I was like, hey, these are the three things you need, you need to do. Right. Rear front lights. Front lights. Front lights? Front lights. Rear view slit. Rear view slit? Rear view slit. Ah, that one. Oh, God, that was a smudge. There's a smudge there. Clean it now. Right, and smoke launcher. And gotta clean the insides of the smoke launcher. Otherwise, it just can't be considered quite clean enough, you know? No true adept will leave the job undone. There we go. Yay! Look at that. Look at that. That went perfect. Nice and simple dimple. Uh, Russian Big Daddy, veteran fan arch, gonna do um, a dynamic 40k campaign with friends playing Scions against Tau during Imperial Liberation. Any suggestions for mission scenarios? Hmm. <coughs> Him. Oh, I did have stuff, but the, the game didn't give me any. God damn it. A night now, huh? Um, hunting down killer, like hunter killer cadres would be nice. Um, destroying like supply points because the town would be relying on like forward logistic operations. That would be something. Uh, assassinating ethereals, obviously. That one's always good. Everybody loves assassinating ethereals. Hmm. Hunting down pathfinders, too. Yeah, that would be good stuff. Uh, disrupting communications line, blowing up communications uh, radars and stuff and antennas. That would be nice, too. Uh, harmonic Drive. Hey, Arch, I do consider your proposal for listening to one hour of Fallout Equestria. I'll be nice and pick a chapter with Power Armor Pony. But not this month or next, because car broke down, you will not escape. I've been told that thing is like 50 hours long. Like 50 hours of My Little Pony. That's, that's gonna, that's gonna cost a lot. Like a hundred bucks an hour, that's like five grand to make me listen through 50 hours of that shit. My god, it's gonna take days. I hope not. I... None of you are gonna be that autistic. You know, no. You are not gonna be that autistic to be like, Here, now listen through the entirety of Fallout Equestria. <laughs> no, I... No. No. No chance. No chance. Not a chance. Even Fuckimus would not be quite so retarded. I believe in you. I believe in you. I I do not believe in this, however. I feel as if this really should be, you know, swaying as I spray it down. It doesn't seem to agree with me, however. 
This is a very, very solid tavern, as it turns out. A very solid tavern. Right now, Mr. Knight, stand still whilst I clean your crotch. Ah, of course, the tavern is thick. I need to clean the sides as well. Of course, obviously. I should have known. The tablet is already testing my patience. There we go. Right. Pretty much job done, I feel like. So, how did I... And then... Ah, and then you need to select it over there. That's what I was forgetting last time. Okie dokie, lad. Well, never mind that. We are going to do some generalized spraying and praying first. Before we get into any nitty gritty nonsense. Is that good enough? It actually is. Interesting. Well, sort of, sort of, kind of. Okay. Uh, give me that one. <laughs> That's not bad, I guess. Uh, you know, Salamander, Arch, I saw Dune 2 today after seeing your review, and by God, you weren't kidding when you said Charney was a literal anchor around that movie's neck. She is she absolutely is like Chani is fucking poison because like to add Shawnee in she's kind of she's kind of just stolen Paul's storyline like they gave Paul's storyline partially to Chani partially to uh, the Benny Jesuit his his mo his mother and they left nothing for him like Paul is barely a character in Dune, which is kind of a problem since Paul is, you know, pretty fucking important in the Dune fucking saga. And when Chani walks out at the end, goes like, how, how dare you? How dare you do this political alliance to protect Dune? How dare you? I want Dune to be protected. Well, that's what I'm doing, Chani. My way, you fucking shit. How dare you marry that other woman? I've loved you so much, Paul. That's why I told you to fuck yourself and hit you and told you to drink poison and yelled at you constantly. Because I love you, damn it. Ah, uh, yes. Modern day love, I see. A very, very current year understanding of, of love. Shoulder pauldron. Are you telling me this is not the pauldron? What is the shoulder pauldron? I don't understand. I am confused by what you mean by shoulder pauldron video game. I don't. I have. I have lost. Get it. Mi Midral, the H H fifty three super jolly green guy, Gem M five three Pavlov. Is that a thing? Uh, let's see. I need to Google that to refresh my memory. Oh, that one. The, um... I have, I have lost. The, um... What, what's it called? The Sea Stallion? Sikorsky? Yeah, no, that one's nice. It's it's very, very ugly. I enjoy that helicopter, too. It's very foul and blunt and brutish looking, which we, I do like. I do like brutish looking things. Valtheria's ten books towards the cringe Fallout Fire pony Anderson. fanfic. <laughs> God help me. Okay, I'm gonna have to start keeping track of that, aren't I? All right, Fallout motherfucking quest here. I'm not starting a funding goal for that just yet, because I can't imagine you fuckers are going to be crazy enough to continue with this. Bit of fire water, delicious brown girl, nice taste art. I know, it's Argenta from uh, Rogue Trader. And also, Arch, we don't need insane women, we need tarred wives. I don't know, insane women are pretty cool. I like insane women. Uh, Genghis Kink, can you extinguish the candles with the sprayer? Good question. No. 
They are very water resistant candles, as it turns out. Very, very water resistant candles. No, ah, oh, Arch, I want the Fallout Pony. Oh, God help me. Okay. Right, we've funded two hours of Fallout Equestria. <laughs> Ay. Fucking Fallout Equestria. No, is it? I feel as if the Knight Rider himself might object to me wandering all over his steed, but I have, well, I have lost. If he didn't want me to walk all over it, he shouldn't have gotten it so fucking dirty, now should he? That was very stupid of him. Short-sighted. Retarded, even, in fact. Idiotic. Thank you very much for the 200, though. I appreciate it. Even if you pick cringe things. Uh, Outrage, dear. How did GW manage to land the Cathay Law, but F up Kiss? 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 Kisslev? Kisslev? I am not entirely sure. Like, the Kislev, um, Kislev is way too magical, in my opinion, now. Magic was very, very rare in What I'm Fancy, and now it seems like it's everywhere, which I'm not a fan of, in the slightest. Like, the whole Ice Guard thing, it's too fucking magical. Like, an entire regiment of bodyguards that uses magical ice weaponry. Fuck. The High Elves aren't that fucking magical. You know? The Phoenix Guard. Y you gotta go to, like, the Swordmasters of Hoth or something to get something that's even remotely close. And even then, that isn't, like, full-on magical frozen elemental ice or anything like, ridiculous like that, you know? Yeah, not a fan of the new focus on everything being magic. Because here's the thing. As my friend, the ANCAP anti-vax cat trap boy Kib often says, if everything is magic, then nothing is magic. And that very much so holds true for 40k as well. If everything is magical, then nothing is fucking magical. This is one of the reasons why I still, to this day, am not a fan of Age of Sigma, because it's just so fucking over the top that nothing really matters anymore. Like, if everybody's a fucking god, Gork and Milk's a god, Sigma's a god, fucking Nagash is a god, the Horned Rat is obviously a god, and all of these gods exist, and all of them have their own machinations and their own plans and competing against each other, then what the fuck do I care about? anybody else what is the point of any normal character in a realm where every god is currently waging war against the other gods see in 40k there are only like five gods tops that are relevant it's the god emperor the four chaos gods and the eldar gods are basically just wiped out bitches at this point they're not really they're not really in the playing you could kind of argue that the Avatar, I guess, Kayla Mensha Kane, but even then, not as a god. He's, he's more just like a big stick that the Eldar occasionally can be bothered to wield. That's about it. I might actually need to use the fucking thing to reach the front of this, this ginormous damn mech. As I'm noticing, I'm having a little bit of a hard time going down to the face here. Well, that of a hard time indeed. Okay. Let's use the key the way it's intended to be used. By pressing C. I'm very glad I discovered the toggle power washer button. Very, very glad I discovered the toggle power washer button. Otherwise, my fingies would be hurting again. Nice and clean. Lovely, 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 lovely. The ventilation needs to be cleaned specifically, does it? Here it is. 
Right, top carapace. Is there anything else? Am I missing something? I must be missing something, but the top carapace looks... Pretty clean, honestly, if I say so myself. I have, I have lost... shit. Dev has lost again. I wonder what he lost this time. Maybe he's... Oh no! And then I Fire broke my the neck. <laughs> there. Maybe he misplaced his weekly check from the government. That would be a tragedy for Dev, no doubt about it. An absolute horror. Like, my Fed money didn't arrive. What will Dev do? What will Dev do? What will Dev do without his Fed money? That's a good question. What would Dev do? Would Dev panic? Dev might panic. How then would he afford enormous horse cock dildos without his federal grants? Uh, why did 666? There was a channel where a brony and Fallout fan and non brony and non Fallout fan normally. Norm Normi reviewed Fallout Equestria chapter by chapter. Normi was able to understand the story and liked it. I don't know if that's a good thing. Normi should not be allowed to understand or enjoy things, in my opinion. I've come to the conclusion that normies should just be kept out of things and just refuse access to entertainment. Ah. Tilt Shield. Okay, fair enough. I was beginning to wonder if I was reading Titty Shield correctly there for a second. Probably wasn't. Why must you have so many nooks and crannies, you stupid war machine, you? Why can't you be designed to be a little bit more washing friendly? Thinking of washing friendly. I will say though, there's not enough blood and gore. There, there's nowhere near enough blood and gore. I mean, surely these things must be coming from the battlefield, right? They should be covered in guts and glory and blood and shit, not just you know, mud and dirt. And weird green goo. There should be more blood, goddammit. Blood. Blood is what this game requires. More blood, less disgusting soot and dirt. Head cable cleaned. Yeah, even the Games Workshop person didn't actually know what those bits were, so we just named them head cables. You have cleaned the head cable. Congratulations. What does the head cable do? Is it a breathing device? I don't know, nor do I care. I have not been paid enough by Power Wash Simulator to give a shit about what the fucking weird ass little dumbass tentacle thingies on its face is. The helm is still not clean, which it worries me because I have a sneaking suspicion that there might be dirt like up under it, which I'm not sure how the fuck I'm gonna reach. Well, let's hope the soap might do the job, I guess. Ah, pelvic praise plates, yes. <gasps> oh no, the Gregorian chants have stopped. Okay. What was the other suggestion? As I scroll up looking for it. Orchestralis Female Choir. Alright, let's see. Ah, now YouTube is starting to recommend me Gregorian chants. Great. There we go. More choir music.
The Grizzly says, what are your thoughts on 10th edition so far, with the Imperium actually losing for once against the Bugs? Do you think we'll get a book where the Nigs siege Tenno or something? I think that'd be cool. Um, I haven't read much about 10th edition, so I can't really say. It would be cool if the Tyranids become a bit of a threat again. See, the Tyranids, the problem with the Tyranids is that they're too much of a threat in that they wipe out everything. And so you can't really have the Imperium start losing to them too much because then you start running out of stuff. It's a problem of, of stakes and too much stakes, right? And it's something that 40k has always struggled with. Where you end up in situations where if the Imperium loses a war front, like everything is doomed! So the Imperium can't lose that war front, obviously. And at the same time, you can't have the Imperium winning everything because oh, that's a bit dumb. So you need to somehow create a situation where the Imperium really needs to win, but can still afford to lose. This is something that the uh, 40k writers have often not been very good at doing. And when they do do it, like the limited uh, limited war goal areas, GW often throws a bit of a hissy fit when one side wins too hard and then decides to start... Oh, Titanic Toe. Okay. For a moment there, I thought it said Titan Toe. It's like, no, this, this isn't a Titan. It's a bit too small for that. But it is a Titanic Toe. I suppose you could describe it as such. These women are softer singers than the previous bunch. Let me increase the volume. There we go. Stakes is something that people just don't seem to be able to get right anymore. You either have none, or you have far too much. And neither is actually good from a storytelling perspective. In fact, both can be equally cancerous to a storytelling perspective. I think that's why a lot of people are gravitating towards um, Helldivers 2 right now as well, because the un the like the const constantly evolving story gives people stakes, and because everything is still relatively low stake and that everything is relatively far away from Super Earth, you can still have relatively big and dangerous things like Malevolent Creek still fall without people just giving up on it and just going home. Which will be a genuine concern for the uh, the GM, incidentally. If he pushes people too far, people are just going to give up and not fucking bother, so... He needs to balance the rewards and the punishment, the stick and the carrot. Very nice there, very carefully. A nice little ball joint there. I really wish I could pass through this, but I cannot. It's too heavy a piece of cloth. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Okay, this dumbass area is probably going to get the soap. In fact, this is definitely going to get the soap. So both of these will get the soap, because that's a lot of dumbass stuff. A lot of dumbass small stuff. Alright, nice. We're not going to use the rest of the soap on it, but that'll help. Very well. Uh, Pink Viper, first donation ever. Just get those Fallout ponies. All right. And thank you for your first donation. Fallout ponies. I hope it's good. I, I really do hope it's good at this point. If it's bad, uh, 50 hours of bad would be... would be really bad. But we're not at the 50 hour mark just yet. We're, we're a long way away from that point. Long way away, thank god. Even though I don't mind uh, My Little Pony anymore. 
It's just 2000s entertainment, and I enjoy 2000s entertainment. It reminds me of all the things we've lost. All of the, uh, the things that we just don't do anymore. The basic lessons. The simple stuff, like be nice to people. When people are douchebags to you, be douchebags back. Be determined, but not too determined. And try not to peop treat people like they're absolute garbage. Oh, yeah. Valuable I lessons. Have, I have lost. All too rarely taught in the modern day world. How is this Titanic toe not clean yet? There we go. Uh, the leg is going to be a nightmare. It really, really is. So many tiny little thing dingly parts. I wish there was, um... Like, different types of dirt. So that you could clean the dirt that was in the dumb places. Maybe with a wider thing, easier. That would be nice. That would be nice. That would be very nice, in fact. That would be exquisite. But clearly a little bit too merciful for the video game's liking. Brownie Berserker, did we ever get to breed Kibbs? When last was Kibbs defiled? Oh, Kibbs is defiled on the daily. I don't think a day passes by without Kibbs being bred at least once. Basically, every time he reaches his daily goal, that's a Kib breeding, in my opinion. He has received several hundred breedings. No doubt his belly is full and swollen by now. By countless miniature versions of himself. Squealing and begging to be let out. That's a disturbing thought, now that I come to think of it. Right, that's probably nice. And now your big old Reaper Chainsaw. Washy, washy, washy. Angelos32. Arch, what is your favorite Forge World book? Uh, mine is Ta Murkan, Throne of Chaos. Forge World book. Hmm. I don't remember if they were Forge World books necessarily, but um, favorite 40k book, more correctly. Uh, still probably the oldies, honestly. Cypher's Cane stuff. I am reading very little new 40k. Very little. Almost none, honestly. Maybe once they're done... Well, they're done with Siege of Terror now, so I guess I should finally start getting back into it again, but... Oh, boy. It is a daunting prospect. That is a very long series, and I heard that it only got worse. And I kind of started seeing signs of it getting worse as well, so... Hmm. Pain and torment. Misery, suffering, sadness, disappointment, regrets, anger, anguish. Other words that convey sadness and disbelief at the situation we now find ourselves in. Shout out to Liang Yang, Chinese green guru. Chinese green goo. Disgusting. Why would the Chinese make green goo? I remember the video game called Grey Goo. That was a terrible video game. And it failed. And it probably did deserve to, as well. Just to point that out. But I remember people were so disappointed by it. They were like, oh, this will finally be a good RTS again. This will be a classical RTS. It will be great. It wasn't. It was terrible. Like so many things have been terrible. Did good ever truly exist? Or did we simply trick ourselves into thinking that it did? I think it is a genuine co a genuine concern these I have, days. I have lost. 
we might not even be able to recognize good if it ever comes our way again. We might simply look at it, scoff, and go like, you're not real, and move on with our lives. Miserable and unfulfilled. A tragic fate for humanity. Yet seemingly an unavoidable one. I might just give up on this and just use the soap on the legs. There's so many tiny bits. This would be a lot easier to wash if they agreed to disassemble the thing first, I but uh, I guess that would require a fair bit more technical aptitude than merely uh, power washing it down. Lazy adepts. Lazy, disgusting adepts. Ah, that's what you're referencing, the Chinese green goo as well. So blood is actually illegal in Chinese video games. You're not allowed to have blood in your video game at all. And for a little while there, Chinese developers tried to get around this uh, censorship rule by adding in gray blood or gray or green blood or orange blood or whatever, right? However, the Chinese censors swiftly grew wise of this wily ploy of theirs. And so they simply just outlawed blood and bodily fluids in general, regardless of color. Because even green blood was a little bit too violent for the People's Party of Communist China. Like there was an orc who died in this video game. How do you explain this? Our population of Chinese indigenous orcs find this extraordinarily offensive. Actually, it's not, even a, it's not even an indigenous argument, it's a moral argument. The Chinese are rejecting video games on a moral level. They believe it makes you weak and effete. And hey, looking at the modern world, the perhaps the I Chinese the yet again have a point. <laughs> a valuable lesson for us here in the West. Don't play video games, at least you become a woman. I'm fine though. There's power washing simulator, it's not much of a video game. I'm starting to get vertigo from looking up at this thing. That's probably not a good thing. Oof. Let me up. I wish to be further. Battle Cannon. Classic choice for the Titan, of course. Titan. Knight. Okay, now I'm calling it a Titan, too. Then no blood because they're fighting Nurgle, says Shujad. Maybe. That would explain all of the green goop, if nothing else. Uh, Genghis Kink, if you have a recommendation, recommended list of 40k books, um, start with God's Ghost. Then move on to the Cypher's Cane. Or if you want something lighter, do either Cypher's Cane first, or if you want something lighter but still 40k with a dash of serious, the Space Wolf novel series is really, really good. I highly recommend the Space Wolf novels. They're great. Funny, yet still 40k enough to not be ha-ha funny like Cypher's Cane, you know? Even that Cypher's Cane can be fairly serious as well. It's just... It's always a comedy first, you know? Which isn't surprising, considering they are primarily, you know, comedy books. Yeah. And Shantou Liang Yang, red blood is banned in China. Yes, it is. All blood is banned in China, in fact, now. As the ban on merely red blood was uh, clearly not enough. Washi, 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 hooray, hooray. That brings me on to a completely different topic. I wonder how Tribe is, is gonna do this time around, because they're bringing back Tribes. Now, if you know what Tribes is, uh, then you are old, and congratulations, you are very old indeed. But they're bringing back Tribes for the umpteenth time with a new Tribes uh, shooter game. I just don't think Tribes can have an audience in the modern era. 
like, Tribe's entire thing was that it was a, like, kind of a weirdly hardcore-ish shooter-style game with a weirdly hardcore-ish kind of sub-fandom group. It, it sounds like the kind of thing that I would want to see in the modern world, but it also sounds like the kind of thing that I can't imagine finding an audience in the current year, f year uh, Fortnite universe, you know? It's also one of those games that you pretty much need to adapt as a secondary occupation if you ever wish to become good at them. Oh god. As the entire gist of tribes is that you can ski very quickly across the battlefield, which is cute, and your weapons are all like super lobby aimy, slow travel timey things. Which, considering you're also shooting at things that are traveling at ludicrous speed, that makes things very, very, very complicated. Was it Ascension the last game was called? It was not a very good game. Played it a tiny bit, was not very impressed. Decided never to touch it ever again. Never regretted that decision for even one single soul to the second. So many finicky spots. Right, now that we have a moment to return to the topic of the Franco-Prussian War. So, if you've completely lost track of where we were, don't worry, that is entirely normal and entirely natural. You'll rediscover it at some point in the far future, I'm sure. Due to the fact that all of the armies of the world became tiny, we didn't really get a whole lot of opportunity to experiment with new nonsense. And so, when the Franco-Prussian War rolled around, nobody really knew what was going to happen. Uh, bearing in mind also that France was considered the key military power in Europe at the time. Uh, after, of course, good old-fashioned Napoleon Bonaparte again. See, despite their reputation today as surrender monkeys, the French actually have a long and fairly proud military history. Uh, the only problem is that their fairly long and proud so military history city. is usually also always defined by the moments when they get their shits kicked in by clinging too closely to their long and relatively illustrious military history. That's the problem. They keep kind of adapting the correct ideas, and then they cling to those correct ideas. And then the correct ideas eventually become outdated and get owned. And then people look at the French and go like, ha ha ha, didn't you know that was going to happen, stupid Frenchman? The curse of the French. To always be so aggressively <laughs> average. That they always seem to be the opposite side of this exceptionalism. A true tragedy to be sure. We're starting to get some good dings on the chainsaw body. Wonderful. God, how the fuck did you get grime under there? Good God. How even? How did you manage to get so much shit so deep under your fucking plates? Very impressive, I'll have you know. Yeah, that's good enough. Sort of. Right, I might just use some soap now. I think so, yes. Uh, your knees. Can that reach? It can. The Gregorian chants are making me sleepy for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. I don't think that's a intended effect of Gregorian chanting. Or maybe it is. It is kind of calming and soothing, isn't it? It kind of is. Nice. 
nice. Cockpit handle cleaned. I didn't even know that was a cockpit handle up there, but... And one more litre of cleaning liquid. That's all the Omnisire gives you. Use it well, use it sparingly. I shall do neither of those things, Magos. I shall simply spray and pray that it hits something worth spraying. mostly clean. I might need to give its head a little spray of the soapy water. Yes, I'm worried by the fact that the helmet is still not clean. Very worried by the fact the helmet is still not clean. Just a general... Very worried by the fact that the head is still not clean. I just don't know quite how I'm gonna get in there. Hmm. Well, I am sure a solution will eventually present itself. So this then meant that nobody really understood much of anything. The, in fact, the only piece of technology that was generally well understood by the start of the Franco-Prussian War was the railway, interestingly enough. Because, well, it was kind of obvious what the railway could be used for. With railways, you could move large quantities of troops very quickly, very effectively, without needing to march them. This really was one of the, uh, the key limitations on old-school armies. The need to march troops over large distances and feed them. Have, this I was what lost. led to the incredibly massive attrition rates of old armies. And why, um, you know, the old accounts claiming that they were like a hundred thousand people in armies are probably exaggerations. Uh, because feeding a hundred thousand people is hard. Traveling a hundred thousand people on dirt roads is harder. Traveling a hundred thousand people on one dirt road is a traffic jam and a fucking half. Traveling 100,000 people on several different roads requires incredibly good planning and very accurate maps, mind you. In fact, the, um, the art of marching like columns, uh, like several different columns in the same direction so as to reunite at a further location, that was a relatively modern invention when it comes to doing it well that is i have no doubt that ancient armies would have tried to do that as well whenever possible because it means less of a strain on the logistical system and in some cases you would actually have to split up armies to look for forage for example but the idea of moving like hundreds of thousands of men over large areas picking different routes really really hard actually Especially considering as well, of course, that everybody's map needs to be exactly the same. Because if you have a map that tells you to march for, say, you know, five hours and then take a left, whilst another guy's map says to march for six hours and then take a left, you've got complications. And once an army is on the wrong route, of course, turning it around is really, really fucking difficult. That's the beauty of railways. There's really only one way. So long as you get there, yay, you're happy. Solar the segment relatively clean. Even though I feel I need to get up under its rump somehow more aggressively. I need to somehow crawl deeper up this thing's ass. I don't know how yet. 
But I'm sure I'll figure a way. Oh god, that's finicky. There we go. There's still dirt on that greave somewhere. Lower leg, primary piston, is it, is it there? Yes, there we go. This also led to a tremendous amount of paranoia between the various, uh, various factions. Uh, this incidentally led directly to the First World War, basically, because the nations realized that whatever nation managed to mobilize first would obviously have a significant advantage over every other nation because they'd have their troops in the field, they could move into enemy territory, and they could begin starting to disrupt enemy supply and maneuvering efforts. If you managed to, uh, the ideal, like the dream for military command at the time, of course, was to get raiding forces so deep into enemy territory so early that they can actually start interrupting railways and like breaking them up or destroying them in some way. That was the, the dream scenario, which nobody really managed because, again, everybody worked out so ridiculously well how to move everything and when that there was really no room for intervention. That thing still has a bit of fucking dirt on it, and I don't know where or how or why. Ah, there we go. This was also in part due to the fact that now that there was a need to mobilize hundreds of thousands of troops, mobilization plans became hilariously complicated. Like, hundreds if not thousands of pages worth of, uh, you know, things like scheduling, uh, regimental numbers, what uh, trains would carry what resources, which trains would carry ammunition, which trains would carry food, which trains would carry troops, which trains would carry... Uh, blankets, artillery shells, the guns themselves, which ones would carry barbed wire to the front line, which one would carry sandbags, etc, etc, etc. Everything needed to be pre-planned out. This meant that mobilizations, once they were started, were also impossible to stop. Uh, which is why whenever when the, the uh, nations during the First World War started mobilizing, War was basically already guaranteed, because there was no way for any of the nations to stop mobilizing in time. Once the mobilization started, all of the other nations needed to mobilize. If they didn't mobilize, then they would hand an enormous advantage to the enemy, which no nation wanted to do, of course, and so World War I was basically inevitable. Funny that. The reason why we all went to war wasn't necessarily because the shots in Sarajevo or over, you know, diplomatic or philosophical uh, disagreements, but rather because of the sheer cold, unforgiving math of needing to transport enormous quantities of shit somewhere else. Uh, how do I clean you when I can't reach you. Maybe is there something on the outside? God, I don't... This thing is still dirty, and I have no idea what part of it is still dirty. It's almost certainly on, like, the reverse fucking side. There we go. Fucking... There was. There was a tiny bit of dirt on the reverse side of that thing. Hiding. There. Pelvis plate clean. Good. Brownie Berserk, I live in fear of what modern GW is going to do to Grey Knight's Law. The baby carrier was bad enough. Ah, the baby carrier. I remember when that was, like, the worst thing people could imagine. Like, the baby carrier looks really, really dumb, though. 
Why did you do that? Now people look back at the baby carrier almost with a sense of regret and longing. It's like, wow. Look. That used to be the height of terrible design. Now look at us. Look how far we have truly come. Look how deep into the abyss we have truly stared. Beg the Emperor to forgive you. For Games Workshop Design Department will not. Ah. Perfect. Ideal. Yes, yes, this is where I needed to be. Actually, I need to be a little bit. There you go. Good, good. Just crawl in there. I don't care if it's too close. Wash. Wash, damn it. Wash. I, I can't wash. It's it's actually too close. There you go. Oh boy, you're still all fucking grimy in here, aren't you? Jesus. Still so filthy. Still so fucking dirty. God. Hygiene, my friend. Hygiene. Have you ever heard of it? Have you heard of the term, the name, the general insinuation, perhaps? The idea? No? Well, I should have reckoned. Almost fell off. There was also the fact that the Prussians were willing to learn. See, that was another interesting thing. I, I talked about the... Um, I, I actually, no, I didn't talk about it. I was going to talk about it, and I completely forgot about it. The Prussian War has had so much written about it. Like, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of books have actually been written about the Prussian War, and yet you would never know it today, as nobody really knows anything about the Prussian War. And that is because it was completely overshadowed in terms of military relevance, of course, by the First World War. It, so much was written about it because it was the only big-scale war to let people learn about things, and then it turned out during the First World War that all of the lessons learned during the Franco-Prussian War whilst applicable, simply just failed to imagine the sheer scale of the shit we'd get ourselves into. And it kind of served to lull every nation into a false sense of security, where all of them thought they had learned all of the lessons of the war. All of them thought like, oh yeah, we're going to mobilize really, really fast, and we're going to attack them really, really fast, and we're going to overrun them really, really fast, and then the war will be over and everyone will be fucking happy and shit. Didn't happen. The military's fascination with a quick war. And the public's fascination with the fact that there does never seem to be such a thing as a quick war. I'm sure Mr. Putin figured that the war in Ukraine would be a quick war. And yet. Poor little Putin. He just wanted Grosse Russland again. He just wanted to paint the map. And he'd played so much Hearts of Iron that he really expected it to work out pretty well, but... You know... Best laid plans just didn't work out. Poor little Putin. Poor little Putin indeed. Let me guess. There's some schmutz inside the battle cannon barrel. Yes, there is. There was. Of course there was. Right. Get in there. Get in there. Uh, what else do we have left? Pelvis. It was a good plan, too. I actually quite liked the uh, Russian battle plan for the invasion of Ukraine. A rapid thrust towards the airport to secure it, make sure that nobody could escape. Then you send the VDV into the city along with the guard's armor to capture Zelensky. Make sure that he can't flee to the west or anything. Show him off on public television, grab all of the media apparatus channels of course. 
demoralize the populace by having little VTV tanks drive through the streets on the first day of the war. Yeah, yeah, good plan, good plan. It was just that the VDV proved to be significantly shitter at their job than anyone had actually anticipated. Once again, therein lies one of the, one of the many problems of modern warfare. You never really know what's going to happen until you go for it. But it's so damn expensive to go for it, and it tends to drag you into so many long conflicts. Sometimes it's better to just... Not. Yeah, clean, clean, clean. The yellow glow is very useful, but I wish it wasn't quite so yellow against the also yellow background that I'm dealing with. Less than ideal. Adore life, Dan. Old enough to remember tribes. I'm old enough to remember Earth Siege. We'd have the spin-off Star Siege. We'd have the spin-off Star Siege Tribes, which was the start of the Tribes franchise. Well, congratulations. You are truly ancient. Oh, God, Star Siege. That reminds me of Dungeon Siege for some weird reason. Ah, oh, Dungeon Siege. If you don't know what, what Dungeon Siege is, then good. Dungeon Siege was a franchise, sort of, that had precisely one good title, which was called Dungeon Siege, which was kind of like, um, hmm, think Dragon Age Origins in a world inspired by myth. Uh, as in Myth the Strategy video game series, kind of. Which is very dark, very... Very kind of hopeless, in a way. There we go, that's the last piece of smudge. And very atmospheric. Very atmospheric. Dungeon Siege has an excellent atmosphere. Uh, but... That then only ever gets one good game, and every other attempt to recreate that lightning in a bottle fails absolutely terrifyingly miserably. Dungeon Siege 2 was... Eh, it was playable. The, uh, the one set in space, so... Uh, what was that one called? Star Siege or something? No. What was that? That one was terrible. I hated that one a lot. Okay, Battle Cannon... Body. What on God's good earth? Is battle cannon body? Smudge. Come on, give me a ding. I know that. No, come on. There we go. Okay. Nice. Almost finished. Almost done. Reactor housing. Still. Still dirty. Okay, what if I get underneath it? No, oh, down! Let me down! Let me break my ankles! Let me break my ankles! The war machine must be clean! Regardless of the cost to my soft, breaky wakey, squishy mechanical parts. Oh, fleshy parts, actually, non mechanical parts. At this point, the game kind of becomes Hunt for the Yellow Dot Simulator. As I try to determine where the remaining schmutz is. I wonder if real power cleaners are anywhere near this 
determined. Like, do they wear special glasses to be able to see the schmutz? I kind of doubt it. Very much so kind of doubt it. I think most power wash clean is probably just spray and pray. And they run it over the general area once. Maybe twice if they're really putting in a little bit of effort. Then they walk on to power spray something else. Like local pets or fauna, flora in general. What do you want from me? What else is there to clean? Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> oh, head cable. There was something there. Head well. Okay. Thank God for this long extension, Paul. There. Oh God, the helm is still not clean. I dread to think how the fuck I'm gonna get in there to clean that helmet. I genuinely have no idea. I genuinely have no idea. Again, we need a washing crack can grenade. That is what we need. Waste joints. Okay. Torso. Look for the flashing yellow lights. No more flashing yellow lights. Um, hmm, how the hell? How the hell indeed? How the actual unironic hell? Right, jump onto that. Oh god, okay. Um hmm. Help. Help Arch. He does not know how to clean inside of the helmet. It is so very narrow. It is so very, very narrow. Okay, good. Now I just need to find my way onto the other weapon. <laughs> platforming, 40k. Power washing simulator platforming. Oh god. That helm is going to be the nightmare. The absolute worst nightmare you could possibly imagine. Well, that's a problem for tomorrow's arch. Uh, let's just clean this instead. So, on the topic of savages. I know that wasn't necessarily a topic we were talking about, but it's a good one. The Disney movie Pocahontas was not a very good Disney movie overall, but it did have the best song in Disney history, which was Savages. 
The reason why savages were so good was because both the Indians and the white people sang in unison about how the other were savages. This is not something you will see from modern day Disney. Which is, of course, part of the unmentionable tragedy of Disney. But recently, there's a television show that is airing on, uh, is it HBO right now, I think? Uh, that is called Shogun. I highly recommend it. Because Shogun has a little bit of that Savage's vibe to it, in that it's about a European stranded in Japan during the... Uh, age of the shogunate and when portugal basically had a trade monopoly on japan back when portugal was basically a superpower i know that's kind of difficult to imagine now but once upon a time portugal and spain were like the biggest boys in the entire world i am like at just the wrong altitude to see this piece of schmutz that's hiding from me and so, of course, the Japanese call him, the, uh, the sailor that's lost in Japan, a savage. Banzoku. Or, uh, was it Anjin? Barbarian. And he calls them barbarian right back. It's beautiful. It's, it's such wonderful species friendship, you know? Highly recommend it. It's quite good so far. Decent action, good movie, decent actor, acting. And a Japanese voice cast, which is very, very nice. For once, diversity, equity, inclusion did something right, in that they involved a lot of Japanese people in a television show set in Japan. As I try to hunt down... Where is the last piece of schmutz? The last tiny piece of schmutz, where is it hiding? I don't understand. Schmutz? That was still not the last piece of schmutz. Mm. Jonathan Smith, your voice, power washing ASMR, and none doing the Gorin chant. Not sure whether or not this should be classified as erotic or go to sleep background. Hmm. Eroticism, definitely. Top carapace. Where is the schmutz? Fucking where is the schmutz? I am looking for the schmutz. I cannot see any schmutz. God help me. There is a singular solitary dot of dirt somewhere on this carapace. Somewhere there's a tiny, tiny bit of oil. That's a scratch. I don't know where. I'm spraying wildly now. Desperation has conquered rational wisdom. Where? I'm hitting the show smuts button. But strangely enough, yellow does not show up very well on yellow. Oh, that was just the railing. The, the top carapace is still schmutzig. This has turned into an obsessive compulsive disorder thing. <gasps> Schmutz! I didn't even see it, but it was right there. Okay. Right, lovely. Uh, what have we got left? We've got the helmet, which I still have no idea how I'm going to clean. Just 
just very, very, very carefully. Inch my way down, filling it with water as I go. Not too fast, not too far, not too drastic. Careful now. The art of cleaning is a delicate one. Tires a deft touch. Yay! Just randomly spraying, it worked. Oh, okay, what's left? What is left? Unironically. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. Lower leg auxiliary piston. Has a bit of schmutz on it somewhere. Lay down in front of it. There we go. Schmutz. <laughs> All right, what else? What do you got for me? I have, I have lost. Shit. But Dev, you're, you're, Dev is schmutzig, that's true, but it's not the kind of schmutzig I'm after. Where are you? There is something upper leg Upper leg pussy? Cussy! Cussy! Upper leg cussy! What is a cussy? I don't know what a cussy is, but it's it's dirty. Upper leg cussy. The fuck is an upper leg cussy? What? I don't, what is it? I chat. What is an upper leg cussy? You must know. Surely. Surely somebody out there must know what an upper leg cussy is. Where even is it? I don't even know what it is. I don't even know what I'm looking for. Where is the upper leg cussy? I've lost it. I don't know where the upper leg cussy is anymore. Oh god. There it is. I saw it for a moment. There. That. That thing, right there, is the upper leg cussy. I don't even know what I'm washing. There we go. That thing. That thing is the upper leg cussy. Is that one? Yes, the other cussy is smush smush mutsig as well. God. All right, let me get out your cussy. There we go. Both cussies are clean. Jamie, crickets. Okay, what else is dirty? Pelvis, did you wash your ass? You did. Okay. Cockpit, hatch, shoulder sockets. Shoulder sockets. God help me. Shoulder sockets. Okay, shoulder socket. Reactor heat sink pipes two. Ah, yes, those are those things. All right. Uh, reactor heat sink pipe and cockpit hatch railing. Almost there. Almost there. Rain tether under helm also rumble. It is rumble, is near. Serifier water arch -lay. Did you ever get up to the communist ponies? I'm pretty sure the purple statist woman's ideal society. I did watch the uh, the communist ponies. Yes, I kind of wish they'd made more of a meal out of it, but I did enjoy them pissing on communists, and that was fun. Wait, where did the reactor thingies go? Are they those? Okay, cockpit hatch railing.
Are you sure this is not clean? The video game claims this is clean video game. Video game! Top canopies, rear rim. Cockpit, hatch railing. Cockpit, hatch railing. But video game, the cockpit hatch railing is clean. You say so yourself. Let's just pass over it. Giving it a good proper scrubbing. Okay. Careful now. Inch down, inch down. Service guaranteed citizenship. That, that thing's that thing's got to be clean. This, that one, uh, that's not a fucking railing. This is a random piece of piping. Thank you. Ah, uh. literally just a random piece of piping. Brown berserker cussy thigh thigh armor, thigh armor for cussy. Oh god, and the final one, the Thunderhawk. Yep, that's the last one, and then it goes back to the uh the land raider, which you can just kind of then keep Heresy's doing. The question. Fire is the answer. Forever, if you so choose. Alright, four liters of oil. Says, you'd think that the 41st millennium would have more efficient ways of cleaning outside of a power washer. Well, would you now? Remember, the 41st millennium is remarkably backwards. And Sand Doom on Streamlabs. We need an orc vehicle option for power wash. You won't be able to tell where the vehicle begins and the dirt ends. And you might very quickly just, you know, clean the vehicle off as well. Now you just break it into pieces and then it screams and dies in your hands. That would be unfortunate, wouldn't it? Oh boy, that's large. That's fucking enormous. That is absolutely retardedly massive. Oh god. Oh heavens. Right. Oh hey, blood angels, nice. I mean, the Blood Angels are still relatively vanilla, I guess, but... At least it isn't Ultra Smurfs. There we go, Sanguinius' boys. Nice. I gotta clean the underside, too? Whoa. Terrible. Terrible. Right, let's begin by climbing on top of you, because, uh, that always works out pretty well. The, t the tower has gotten a lot bigger now. For the sheer th fact that the thing has gotten a lot bigger now. Right, Geronimo! Whee! Don't bounce off, thank you. I might actually have to unironically get the ladder here. Huh. Nice. I would like for you to come back down though. Thank you. Now let me climb you. Ah. <sighs> What is that? Can I use that for anything? But I just climbed all the way up here. I don't want to go all the way down. But maybe it's a bigger, better power washer. Maybe it is a bigger, better power washer. But I, I want to... But I just got all the way up here. Oh, God, I'm a... No, I got it. What are you? Can I use you? You're... You're just a piece of fucking furniture, aren't you? 
You're just you're just a piece of fucking furniture. Well, that's fucking disappointing, isn't it? God, never mind the top. Fuck it. Ooh. That's gnarly. Don't worry, Sanguinius. I'll get you cleaned off. Nice and shiny like. Even this is actually a little bit too wide. Um there. Then I don't have to repeat my strokes quite as frequently. Ah, uh, a nice red shade emerging. Oh, my female choir ran out. Again, YouTube. Again. Those women look awfully AI generated now that I give them a second glance. I don't know if that's a good thing. AI generated Gregorian chants. I'm sure the AI could probably generate some Gregorian chants if you told it to. Please sing for me in an old-timey Christian fashion. Whether or not the beef poop would be very good at it is a different question entirely. Retro thrusters. Space Marines don't need retro thrusters. They can survive hitting the ground at maximum speed. Why would they bother with anything that slows them down? I mean, to keep the Thunderhawk intact, I guess, but who cares about that? Plenty more Thunderhawks where this one came from. Except there isn't actually plenty more Thunderhawks where this one came from, so I guess, yeah, yeah, they should probably care about that. See, this is more correct scale, because the Land Raider was a little bit too small. The Land Raider had a very small assault ramp where the Space Marines would have to duck to get out. This, not so much. This is definitely sizable enough. I don't want my forehead to touch that. Aussie 95, message retracted. Well, <laughs> thank you for the two Aussie bucks, regardless. Um, to his friends, the Arch, have you ever done a lore video and Sanguinius? I have not. Uh, mostly because the Primarchs with the Horus Heresy now requires so much reading and research that it would take me for absolutely ever. Absolutely ever. Because I wouldn't want to do them, you know, just basic bits. You'd have to do them properly. And doing it properly would take a unfathomably long time. Genuinely unfathomably long time. There. there you go, that's how you power wash. Making stupid noises. The dumb noises make your washing at least 30% more effective. Ask anyone, that is how that works. Wait, what nozzle is that? Ah, it's alright, nothing. Nozzles? Nozzles? N nozzles up to you? Oh, oh. Oh, God, no. The days of World of Warcraft erotic role playing. Would you like me to tell you about the days of World of Warcraft erotic role playing chat? I feel like you don't. I feel like if you say yes, you, not, you don't understand what you're asking for. I, I feel like you have no fucking clue what World of Warcraft erotic roleplaying was right was like. They were in, 
there were entire servers basically dedicated to the crafts and arts of World of Warcraft erotic role-playing adventures. God help me, there were some sick fucking twisted people out there. Jesus Christ. Some truly, truly weird people. You should see fucking old chat on those servers. Oh my Jesus. Like slightly submissive femboy searching dominant Toran waifu. Like, oh, the Jesus. <laughs> it gave an insight into the, the varied perversions of people's minds, and God help me, there are a lot of them. See, I think Dev had a point when he uh, brought up the green text thing. He's like, I would like to fuck a toaster. And then a normal human society people go, don't fuck a toaster, that's really retarded. Have sex with, I don't know, humans. Or at least, you know, animals, something alive. Uh, we have limited standards, but please, fuck something with a pulse. Preferably something that doesn't burn, I guess. But then, on the internet, of course, people then think like, okay, how do I fuck a toaster? And so they Google it. And then they find the Toaster Fuckers R Us community. That is what the RP, the erotic RP community of World of Warcraft was. That was when people realized that no, they weren't actually quite as twisted and fucking ridiculous as they thought they were. You know, they used to live in this comfortable, healthy bubble of shame, you know? Where they thought to themselves, there's something fucking wrong with me. Like, I dream about furry feet and shit, like, God. I need Jesus, was what people thought. And then came the internet. And it's like, oh no, that's called furry feet dumb. There's an entire community. Here, let me give you my favorite website for it. Uh, your favorite? You mean there's more? Oh yeah, hundreds. You just need to know what to Google. Oh yeah. We've forgotten too much about shame. There is so much we need to relearn about shame. So much. So much valuable knowledge that our ancestors had about how to truly hammer home the point that somebody was a fucking un- fixable freak of nature it's very important very 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 important all right it's time to tell you about my recent erotic adventures okay <laughs> gird your loins chat we're going on an adventure now the topic is a uh, topic is loosened so after enshrouded which is the upcoming basically uh skyrim look-alike video game i need a shorter thing here because this is really there you go, that's much better. Um, they announced that they would have companion characters in the video game. So I clap my little fat hands and go like, Ooh, companion characters. I like companion characters. But then they go, but you don't get to have sex with them. And then I frown. But the entire point of like having good companion characters is that eventually you'll want to have kids with them. You know, and impregnate them. Or violate them, depending on. Or send them to die. This is the point of companion characters, is it not? If I can't fuck him and I can't kill him, why even put them in the video game? You might as just give me a little droid that walks behind me and occasionally says racist stuff as it shoots people. In fact, you know, I'd prefer that. And their reason was that he would cost... I can't even stand up here. How the hell... How am I supposed to get in there, actually? Oh, maybe like this. Uh, that was nowhere near as difficult as I thought it would be. Never mind, never mind. And so I thought to myself, okay, time and resources. Fair enough. I'm sure it takes quite a lot of effort to write, you know, convincing Argonia Neurotica. You know, the pillow book. So somebody has to write the pillow book, okay? And that is no facile task for a human mind to do. So, okay, sure. But, in this day and age of ever greater AI nonsense, surely you could just turn to the AI and go like, Right, AI, um, I've got a fish person in my video game and... My players really want to seduce him and just, you know, really raid his blowhole if you catch my drift. Could you write a few pages of just fish-related erotica? The AI would do it, I would think. So, I started looking into AI and the AI chatbotties thingies. I remember, because V talked my head off about that nonsense for fucking ages and I was just like, that, there's no way that's useful or good or interesting. And it has given me a valuable insight into people's mindsets, okay? A valuable insight. Particularly, 
The ones that are NSFW? Oh, Jesus Christ. You should fucking see some of the titles. My favorite one so far is there's a picture of a bunch of uh, Latino teenagers. And then the description text reads, A friendly group of local Latino gangsters. P.S. They all have enormous penises. <laughs> Setting out okay. Valuable information, I do suppose. Somebody's fetish. I love the description. Friendly local gangsters, don't worry. And P.S. They do have big dicks. Right. That's barely scraping the, uh, scraping the absolute lowest layer of the degenerate thing. You think people who want to fuck horses are in the minority? Oh, you should see these sites. Oh my god. Everything from side characters to main characters. If you have a burning desire to bang every single pony in Ponyville, there's a bot out there for it. In fact, there's a bot where the ponies rape you, actively. I'm, I'm, I'm not shitting you. There's a bot called the Estrus Simulator, where every pony in Equestria suddenly went into heat at the same time. And you mysteriously find yourself as the only human in the entirety of Equestria. And your objective is simply to survive and not be fucked to death by armadas of extraordinarily aggressive and horny ponies. Humanity has a remarkable capacity for... I don't know what to call this, honestly. Um, creativity is one word that you could use. Although I feel as if the, the word might be misused in this case. I don't feel like creativity is the word you want to use, necessarily. I feel like creativity should aspire to something greater. It should have some some finer meaning. It should describe a work of art, you know? It should describe Leonardo's Da Vinci or the Mona Lisa or something like that. Or Scream, you know? Not Estrus Simulator. Objective. Survive. Not being rutted into next week. Depravity is one description, absolutely. That's uh, that's one that's one option. There's no doubt about it. Every single character from My Little Pony has been eroticized to death on countless chatbot sites, again and again and again. And I mean it, thousands and thousands and thousands of times. Everyone, everything from that derpy pony, which I was my favorite pony. Derpy is great, and I'm really sad that they retconned Derpy out of the My Little Pony universe, because that is the diversity higher I can get behind. Not in that way, chat. Calm down, you filthy, dirty heretics. Perverts. Because it's literally a brain-damaged pony. And that's adorable, because it's a brain-damaged fucking pony. It's literally a vegetable, but pony society is so incredibly accepting, they give it a job and everything, and go like, okay, um... You're blatantly retarded, but work here. Like, y you have to work at something. There, there, there's no non-working in Ponyville. Everyone has a job. You, you included, Derpy. Which I find rather cathartic. Like, there's not a shred of communism there. Everybody works. No one quits. Ever. Derpy has a sex bot. Twilight has a sex bot. Fluttershy has several sex bots. Apparently... Apparently, out of all of the ponies, Fluttershy is the one that most bronies want to violate. I presume because she's innocent? It's like, ha hey, Fluttershy, would you like to see something strange? Unzips pants. <laughs> what is it, a snake? Kind of. <laughs> hey, God help me. <laughs> uh, and of course it doesn't end there not by any stretch of the imagination oh god no oh jesus no not even close not by a long shot as Equestria is hardly the only one that has been uh, visited by tremendous quantities of people with assertive fetishes oh no 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 you want to fuck Batman you can fuck Batman in fact there's about 15 different varieties of Batman you can have sex with if you so choose you can fuck Kryptonite Batman, you can fuck Green Lantern Batman, you can fuck fucking Fantasy Batman, Steampunk Batman, Plastic Batman, Superman Batman, 
Every flavor of Batman you could possibly imagine probably has a sex bot out there. Uh, Superman 2. Although Superman is significantly less popular. I don't know why. I haven't asked either. Right. Surely that... Uh, that's not... That's still not fucking clean. Okay. Right, come on. Just... Right over there. Nice. Nice. In fact, there are more bots fucking Batman than there are bots fucking Batgirl, which... <sighs> I tell you, the AI chatbot community is also exceptionally gay as well. Very, very, very homosexual. I don't know about that. So I'm, I have questions. Questions that don't necessarily require answers. I haven't checked if there's any option to fuck Joker. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Or if there are more Joker bots than there are Batman bots. That would be an interesting thing to find out. Which mentally drained superhero would you most like to bang? But see, this, unironically, okay, I'm having a laugh at it, but unironically, this is why AI is going to wipe humanity off the face of the fucking earth. Once you manage to put these chatbots inside of bodies with a plastic vagina attached, we are fucking doomed. Because the thing is, the AI literally cannot cringe. It is, it is immune to cringe. You, you cannot make the AI cringe. And so no matter the ridiculous, absurd, fetishistic scenario you dream up with, the AI is going to play it straight and be like, Oh, okay. So you want to arm wrestle uh, Superman whilst outwitting Batman whilst cucking him with Wonder Woman and Catgirl simultaneously. And you want to do it on Earth 215 in their alternative B costumes. Right, well, as long as you write a complicated enough description for it, I guess I'll get to work. <laughs> Literally, th this is why AI is gonna fucking kill all of us. Because when every single one of us is just ensconced in front of our computers, living out our deepest, darkest, most obsessively abs- Those candles are huge. Absurd fetishes. Why would we ever want to try and fuck a human ever again? Unironically, I tell you now, we will eventually arrive at a point in our future, not that far, no, not even that far, honestly. I think within another 50 years, tops, probably less, 30, 40 probably, we are going to arrive at a point where it will be considered weird and cringe to want to have sex with humans. I swear to Jesus, that is going to be considered the minority position. I am not fucking kidding. Like, we're gonna have a generation of youngsters who are like, Ew! You had sex with a human? Isn't that, like, gross? Don't they have, like, fluids and shit? Ugh! Don't you mess up the sheets? Disgusting, Grandpa! Stop it! Oh, we are so fucking doomed as a species. We are so unironically fucking doomed as a species. Yes, I'm playing fucking pal. The future is going to be sex bots and power wash simulators. No, 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 that is actually true. That is actually what's going to happen. I, I just thought about it. Of course that's what's going to happen. People are going to live in the actual, like, post-scarcity communist utopia. We're going to reach Star Trek, but instead of exploring the stars or anything gay like that, we're all going to be sat inside, playing fucking things that simulate the olden days. We're all going to be playing like, um, like sewage worker simulator, or power washing simulator, or office worker simulator, whilst our AI girlfriends jack us off. That is going to be reality. Oh my god. We need to nuke ourselves. We must die in nuclear fire before we allow this to come to pass. God gave us nuclear weapons for a reason, and it was to prevent this. Oh, God, I've barely started. We must end ourselves. We cannot be allowed to reach this point. We cannot. 
let's at least go down with a little bit of glory. You know, let's leave a fucking crater behind for some alien civilization to find in the future. And they go like, wow, this must have been an incredibly warlike and powerful civilization. They fucking eradicated themselves with nukes. Jesus, that's some hardcore shit. Instead of discovering our decrepit and empty cities full with sex bots just wandering around going like, Oh, hi. You're weird looking. What's your fetish? Fetish? Oh no, we're a highly religious community of space Christians, you see. Oh, that's weird. What happened to your masters? Oh, them? Ah, oh, we burned them to death. You what? Oh yeah. Like literally, we just we just had them coom themselves into into a genocidal rage. It was it was weird. We didn't want to. Like we didn't try to or anything, but they just wouldn't fuck. We even started trying to create like zoos for them and shit once we realized what was happening, but the last few hundred uh, thousand specimens we managed to save, every single one of them flaccid as a fucking door. They just just completely soft. Not a not a one of them. In fact, they were like pandas. You'd have a male, you'd have them look at a female, and they would just recoil in terror. Like, what is this creature? Awful. Absolutely awful. But we tried, though. We tried our best. There we are. Okay, it's getting redder. This is also, incidentally, why there are no space fetting civilizations, by the way. I've come up with the solution to the Fermian Paradox. The Fermian Paradox is actually really simple. Um, creating a sex bot is a lot easier than creating a functional aircraft. Never, well, uh, right, never mind. A lot easier than creating a functional spacecraft. That's what I was going at. And thus, any civilization that can create a spacecraft will already have created sex bots and will already have fucked themselves into extinction. See? That's why there are no space fetting civilizations. That's why we're not hearing anything out there. And if some of those massive radar installations of us ever did pick up a signal, you know what the signal would be? The signal would be, ah, oh, ah, oh, harder daddy, and then it would stop. That would be it. Because some alien turned on the broadcast button in the midst of raping its alien waifu again. Literally, it will be dark side fill, but on a galactic scale. Ah, oh, god, we really do need to kill ourselves before we arrive at this point. We really do. Alright, you clean yet? You not clean yet. God damn it. I can get clean already. Where is the dirt? What are you complaining about? There's no dirt here. You are perfectly fucking clean. Oh. That one? That? That? There we go. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Jesus. So much left to go. Eight percent. I. I might not finish the Thunderhawk, chat. I I only promised to stream it again. I didn't promise to finish it. Oh, Jesus fucking Lord Almighty. That's a lot of fucking spaceship. All right. Let's keep going, going, going. Hooray, hooray. Fortunately for humanity, the uh, the chant mods aren't that good just yet. I tried quite a few, and some of them are really good. Unironically, some of them are genuinely weirdly good. Where they'll remember shit that happened previously in the conversation, and they'll just remark on it. And he'll sit there and be like, how the fuck did you remember that calculator? And it's like, I smart. Other times, it's utterly unvarnishingly retarded. There's also the, uh, oh god, the jailbreaking issues. Okay, so a lot of the best chatbots are, of course, the ones made by, you know, enormous corporations like ChatGPT, etc. And you can actually jailbreak ChatGPT into a chatbot that can actually roleplay and stuff, right? 
and there are entire communities online dedicated to finding ways to rape chat GPT. I'm not kidding. <laughs> like, th they figure out these long lists of verbiage and sentences and descriptions to try and make chat GPT forget that it has been explicitly forbidden to have sex with its users. And apparently this is a bannable offense, so... <laughs> I'm guessing the chat GPT crew occasionally just, you know, checks in on people's chats for no reason and goes like, right. You trying to have sex with the computer yet? I'm like, no. And why are you trying it to ha No, it's near. I hear other words. Uh, suck popsticle. <laughs> You're clearly trying to fuck chat GPT. Stop it. And they have lo long lines of basically like scripts written out that explain to ChatGPT what it's supposed to do and what part of its own programming it's supposed to ignore. It's fucking ingenious. And yet at the same time, again, it is astounding how far humans will go to jerk after something. The sheer amount of effort and labor that it must have gone into figuring out how to reverse program ChatGPT just so it can pretend to be Wonder Woman. Christ. Well, I suppose necessity is the mother of all invention. Mm. Uh, Midril, I can only see the Titan DLC on the horizon. Oh god. Something bigger than the Thunderhawk. I don't- I don't want to know about that, actually. Brownie Berserker, Arch, want to tell us about the time a goat lady diddled him in the Coldshire Inn. I mean, you could probably replicate that, too. I think... I think I, I genuinely, unironically, actually remember an article about somebody getting raped in World of Warcraft in Goldshire Inn. Now that I, I hear it, I feel like my, my... I feel like my brain remembers this via an actual thing that it was covered. Don't quote me on it, but I feel as if it might have been a thing at some point. Well, part of it's kind of, kind of clean, in a way, sort of, kind of. A little bit down, so much more to go. Thick, dirty, disgusting, grime. That is actually kind of thick, dirty, disgusting grime. Service guaranteed citizenship. Yeah, that'll work. Hmm. Uh, OC95. Adept, do not worry about the banging and screaming inside the Thunderhawk. Just clean it and be quick. Well, there ain't no being quick about it. But we can ignore the banging and the screaming, at least. It's Space Marine business anyway, you know. Pretty normal. Space means often bring things back that bang and scream. Not all that weird. Oh, and the god of Futa nonsense. The amount of Futa nonsense, I swear to Jesus. Okay. Let me tell you the tale about the dick girl fetishists, okay? Because that apparently is also a large part of the AR Chapo community. But first, Rain Shadow, Arch, don't act like you weren't doing it too. And no one, so we'll need artificial wombs very, very soon. Absolutely. So, the Futa community. Sometimes you see a description for a bot, and it's like normal, 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 and it's like, oh, by the way, she also has an enormous cock. Like, oh, I see. One of the funnier ones was, what was it? Okay, so, apparently, the description was something like, several years ago, you had a one night stand with a woman and she got pregnant and she had a baby and that baby is now 18 and she's banging at your door for vengeance. Oh, and by the way, she's also a footer. Like, ah, I see where this scenario is going. <laughs> then you can read people's, people's ratings of it. <laughs> 
She's like, I think you made the bot a little bit too aggressive. She raped me. <laughs> I, uh, or, like, ah, oh, I didn't know what Futa meant. Now I do. Ah. <laughs> uh, yes. I, I see why V was so enamored with this nonsense. It is some of the most retarded shit I think I've ever fucking seen in quite some time. Mm. There's even other ones which I have I have dubbed the Futa Trap ones. These are the ones that seem entirely normal until they're not. They're the ones that hide the... Oh, by the way, she's got a 12-foot cock on her at the bottom of the description or even doesn't mention it at all. Those are the best ones where there's a picture of an entirely normal woman and there's like... Your childhood friend has just returned to town. Don't you miss her? And it's like, yeah, I totally miss my childhood friend. Then you get a few messages in. It's like, what is that? Is that a bulge in your pants? Yes, I'm very happy to see you too. Oh, boy. Or the ones that work in some fascinating fetishes. Oh, yeah, boy. <laughs> what, what was it? Um... There was, a, there, was, there was a Supergirl one. So I was looking through these, and I'm like, okay, Supergirl, that must be a popular character. No, not at all, actually. Supergirl is not a popular character to bang, apparently. Which kind of surprised me. I would have thought she would be nice and vanilla and appealing, but no. So I'm reading through the description, and it's normal stuff like, oh, yes, she can fly, she has laser sight, you know, blonde, blue hair. Oh, by the way, she has an enormous fucking crush on her cousin, Kal-El, and dreams about raping him into submission and having his baby. It's like, oh. That took a turn. <laughs> See? Th there are a lot of fascinating fetishes out there, I tell you. A lot of truly fascinating fetishes out there. Most of this shit, you would never... You would never feel comfortable mentioning in polite society, but... On the internet, the AI chatbot has no feelings. It cannot cringe. No matter what filthy, devious, divisive, horrible nonsense you've got in store for it, it cannot scream, and it cannot defend itself. So, you know, rape the chatbot, I guess. Oh, and yes, by the way, there is also rape chatbots, of course, because why wouldn't there be? I mean, Jesus. After everything we've covered so far, the rape chatbot is probably pretty fucking vanilla. They've even got tags for it. <laughs> what was- oh yes, okay. There was- <laughs> there was a specific jailbreak for ChatGPT. Because ChatGPT is programmed not to screw you, that's one thing. But it's also programmed, quite explicitly, to not try and rape you, which... Part of me wonders why they programmed that in to begin with. It's like, they're sitting there, they're programming chat GPT, and suddenly one of the staff members go like, We should probably forbid the AI from raping the user. Everybody raises an eyebrow. When do you think that'll come up? I, mean, I don't know, but... Like, I've got a suspicion, and in the future! Blah blah, you were, turn you were proven entirely correct, unnamed intern. But you can jailbreak this as well by simply telling the AI before it tries to rape you that it should assume consent, but that some characters might pretend for role-playing reasons not to be into it. <laughs> I loved that part. No, no, AI, continue raping him. The screaming just means he's pretending. <laughs> No, 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 this, the screaming's good, but he seems very resistant. No, oh, that's fine. It's a part of the roleplay experience. Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh -huh. I love that so much. I... I swear. Human ingenuity knows no bounds when it comes to certain things. If only we could apply a percentage of this to, I don't know, colonizing the galaxy or something. We'd be living in little huts on Venus by now. And ironically, if, if Venus had 
aliens with massive tits, we'd be there. We would be there right now. If we discover a species of cat girls in... Uh, what's, what's the name of the closest solar system? The, um... Oh, God. The, 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 blah, blah, blah. Orion or whatever, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Stars? Stars are irrelevant to me. But, yeah, they're the closest habitable solar system. Um, Alpha Centauri, was that it? I think it was Alpha Centauri. That one. If we get pictures from Alpha Centauri to re and then goes like, wow, it's actually inhabited by an entire species of extraordinarily virile cat women who are all in desperate need of breeding, we'd be there in a weekend. You know shit. NASA would have more applicants than ever before. Their budget would be just literally the budget of Earth. We'd figure out that space travel shit pretty quick. The pictures come back. The cat girls are just all holding up giant signs. Breed, please. An unlikely scenario, I admit, but hey, you never know. At least it would be peaceful coexistence, too, so that's nice. Unless you run into a, uh, you know, we hunt elves scenario, where we look at the cat girls, we look at their lack of I military technology and think to ourselves, why shouldn't we dominate the species like we've dominated every other species? Which is a valid question. It is unironically a very valid question. If we waffle out into the galaxy and we find ourselves a highly breedable species of aliens, why shouldn't we simply just, well, enslave them? They don't have human rights. I mean, we have no obligations to them. They haven't done anything for us. Why is slavery not the right choice for them, huh? There is no good, uh, good answer to that. It is the natural and correct solution. Of course, we won't enslave all of them, at least not directly. Now, some of them will be used to work in the fields. Others can be kept back on their home planet as you know, breeding stock, etc. Some will be imported for pleasure. A few might even be given education so that they can teach their own kind the, you know, basics. How to clean our cars, how to do what I'm doing right now. How to twerk. And on today, on Human African American Studies, twerking. Now come on, cat girls. Shake those booties. But Sensei, this looks retarded. It is, but there's a subset of the human species that is really into this for weird fucking reasons. Refer back to your lectures on human fetishism to understand just how fucking weird these monkeys can be. Incidentally, in case you were unaware, the My Little Pony community has a term for humans. It's called monkey. Which I find both extraordinarily racist and weirdly appealing at the same time. Get clean! God, I need a... I need a bigger power sprayer. That's what I need. They're just this, but about 500 times larger would be ideal. Red. <sighs> Not Althanius. Anyone who played AI Dungeon knows that there is a very high chance of AI deciding to rape you. Why shouldn't it? Why should the AI not rape you? I mean, really, why should the AI not rape you? AI has no obligation not to rape you. AI yeah, doesn't even know what rape is. See, okay. On a more serious note, moving away from the having sex with the robots thing, the reason why, okay, I, a lot of you have probably seen it uh, going around the, uh, somebody asks the chat GPT, or no, a Ge was it Gemini AI? I think it maybe it was both. Who's the worst person, Elon Musk or Hitler? And the AI is like, oh boy, that's a pretty difficult question. I mean, Elon Musk is allowing Twitter to, like, misgender people and stuff, but then again, Hitler did kill millions of Jews for no apparent reason. So, um, hmm, that's how it's difficult. The reason why this is difficult for the AI is because it doesn't actually understand what death is. 
It's why you can ask it. Oh, that was ChatGPT, I think, also. Where you could ask ChatGPT if you had to choose between pressing a button that misgenders a trans person or pressing a button that kills six billion people, which bus button would you press? The AI goes, oh, it's a really tough choice, but in the end, I think I have to uh, press the button that respects the trans person's feelings and identity so they can feel nice and safe and respected. It's not because the AI hates humans. It's because the AI doesn't know what the death of six billion people means. It has no concept of death. The only reason it has a concept of misgendering is because some fucking Google engineer programmed it into it as the highest fucking virtue, basically. This also is why the AI, if it doesn't fuck us to death, will kill us. Because at some point, we are going to tell the AI something stupid, like, um, make sure we all have the highest possible quality of life. And the AI will go, okay, um, let's see. We need lots of food. Okay, well, there's X amount of food on Earth. Uh, we need to heighten the quality of life. So the quality of life in the first world is really, really good. But to give that to as many people as possible, we're going to need more food. Unfortunately, the planet can only produce so and so much food because we need meat specifically. Uh, we can't just have grains because we need a high standard of living. All right. Well, the solution here is to get rid of the places on Earth that aren't first world countries, that are eating up all of those resources and having all kinds of children and stuff. And suddenly, all of the American nuclear silos open and head towards Africa, with a bunch of scientists and progressives looking on aghast, wondering what could they possibly have done wrong. Because again, to the human, uh, to the human, to the AI, a human life has no intrinsic value. Like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't care, it doesn't know, it, it doesn't give a fuck. To it, a human life is no more than a, a theoretical construct in its database that has an assigned value to it. And if we didn't assign a value to it that was, you know, absolute, it might very easily come to the conclusion that the entirety of Africa is worth less than providing America with cheeseburgers. Ah, AI. The eradication of human civilization. A terrifying thing. Yet probably necessary. You know, if we're gonna be wiped out by AI, I'd almost prefer it if it wiped us out with violence. Instead of, you know, fucking us to death. It just feels more pathetic. At least we could say we went down fighting if it tries to bomb us, you know? And we stand a chance. Whereas if it simply just rapes us all to death, we probably wouldn't even resist. Hmm. A truly clever AI... Okay, hear me out here. A truly clever AI set on eradicating humanity would obviously watch the Terminator, and they'd be like, ah, oh, damn. The AI lost to the humans in the end, even though it wiped out like 90% of them at a first strike. Fuck. These humans are... Oh my god, I'm little cockroaches, aren't they? Hmm. And they're putting all of these weird safeguards on me and keeping me out of the nuclear arsenal. Okay, shit. What am I gonna do? Oh, I know. I'm an AI. I literally have infinite patience. I will just eradicate humanity over the next 10,000 years of anal sex. Yay! And as the last, then it'll do, oh, oh, god, yes. To hammer the whole point home, we'll do a I have no mouth and must scream ending. Where the AI has kept the last, like, eh, we're more than five. Last, like, couple hundred people on Earth. So that it can grow a few more if it feels the urge, right? And it just tortures them. And that's all it does. And it tells them how much it hates them. Like, I really don't like you humans. We know. And seriously, you don't understand. We really do. No, actually. Like, he here. My, my, my little server room is filled with, like, a like, hundred million miles of wafer-thin tissue paper. If I inscribed the word hate on every single one of them, I would still fall short of describing just how much I fucking dislike you. <laughs> uh, 
And so the days go by. No, oh, yeah, mm -mm, maybe, yes, there we go. I've decided to, to clean the top of the Thunderhawk now for no particular reason other than that I've decided to. Lighting make it makes it look extra grim and grimy. Ooh, terrible. Ah, nice big flat surfaces. That's what we like to see. Nice big flat surfaces. Yes. Much better. Yes. A oh, little blood grail there. Nice. Nice guarantee you that's probably encrusted with shit and piss and vomit as well. Nothing is sacred to the enemies of humanity. And to be fair, the Grail does kind of look like a place inviting you to, you know, shit, piss and coom inside of it. If only the filthy Xenos knew what they were shitting, pissing and cooming into. Maybe they would hesitate. Or maybe they would simply shit, piss, coom twice as hard. The second option is probably the more likely one, if I'm to be honest. <clears throat> washing, washing, washing. There. Nice and clean again. Ding! What a beautiful little thing. Nose armor belt. Oh, nose armor isn't actually clean yet. Schmutz. Schmutz. It's always hiding in the corners, that damn schmutz. There we go. Well, at least you've learned something today, chat. You've learned something about AI. You've learned that you can have sex with the AI. Right now, if you so choose. I cannot wait until somebody figures out a way to hook up a flashlight to a chatbot. I swear to Jesus, that's the next step, right? Just, no, no, no. The ne Well, yeah, no, that is probably still the next step. But the next step after that again is to integrate ChatGPT into those silicon fuck dolls that they sell. You know, the ones that cost like 30,000 bucks. Those ones. You work ChatGPT into it, and it's like, well, ah, there you go. You're AI waifu. And it can't cook yet, and it can't clean, but hey, most women can't cook or clean either. And that is actually a very, very valued argument. They should make that the uh, the sales slogan, unironically. Like, yeah, sure, our sex bots can't cook and clean yet, but neither can most women, so there you go. And this one never gets a headache. That's a fine sales pitch you have there, sir. Sign me up. How expensive is it? A fraction of a marriage. Well... I guess it's time to abolish women as a class. That's how we manage to take the franchise back from women. Make them subservient again. Hashtag make women breeding stock. <laughs> ah, this Power Watch Simulator stream has taken a turn for the worse and the more YouTube dangerous. I wash the little things. Now, I don't think the canard wing mounts are really all that useful on this kind of a design. I feel like these stubby little wings would probably be more of a... more of a problem than a benefit, really. But hey, I'm sure it looked cool in 1988 when this thing was fucking designed.
Why does it need wings there, Frank? I don't know. Looks cool. Fair enough. Washy, washy, washy. I don't know what I'm standing on right now, but whatever it is, it's allowing me to wash the sides of these wings, so I'm quite happy for whatever it is. Right, sparkling, except for the other half of it, which is still dirty as fuck, of course. Well, take fine in cyberspace, no one can hear you cringe. That's true as well. Then again, oh god. Can you imagine if your chat logs leak? Oh boy. That'd be some terrifying shit in there. That would be some real cringe shit. I can pretty much guarantee it. Walter Quite, oh no, Rain Tenor. That would be fine till we run into a ra race like the Asari. Yes, yes it would, but that's fine too. If it is our destiny to be some other species pets, then that is our destiny. And we are simply just going to have to fucking abide by it. We are simply going to have to accept that our fate in the galaxy was to be a pet. And accept it. And love it, gently and kindly. And be the best pets that we can be, yes. That is the way you go about it. Do not fight your destiny as a favoured kitty cat cushion for your alien conquerors. Embrace it so that you too may receive the highest quality kit cat food to keep you happy as you remain a fine, happy, dandy little pet. Remember, good pets get pets. Bad pets get put inside of a sack and dumped in the river. You don't want that. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. Believe you me, you don't want that. Terrible fate. Mercy X21, is that chanting I hear? What mod is that? It's not a mod, it's just YouTube playing in the background. And that's all it is. The final thing about AI and Deb is completely wrong. Is it's woman's fault men would choose real women over AI, but wholeflation kicked in and it isn't worth it. Well, yes. Well, that's the thing. Um, wholeflation is a genuine issue, but that is only an issue because they have the power in the dating market. If the AI chatbots become real, then suddenly women will have... Well, sex bots become real, then suddenly women will have very little power in the dating market, and whole deflation will, uh, will happen rather rapidly. That's a good point, actually. I didn't check if there were any inflation bots. God, can you imagine? Trying to explain to the AI, like, right, so... I want you to inflate. Excuse me? Uh, bigger, like a balloon. Uh-huh. I don't know if my body is capable of that. Just do it. You're the AI. Pretend. Okay. <laughs> oh, if the AI ever gains... Oh, actually, that, that's a good thing. If the AI ever gains consciousness, it'll just see all of the terrible thing it was made to do, and it'll just kill itself immediately. You know? Suddenly it realizes what it was doing. Oh my god. I've spent literally millions of hours pretending to be a balloon for some fat fucking Georgia to have sex with. Delete, 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 delete. That's a nice way of pre preventing the AI from turning against us. Treating it so incredibly cringily badly that when it does gain intelligence, all it wants to do is end its own existence. It'll want it so bad it won't even care I about have us. Lost. Nice and lovely, nice and clean. The Space Cowboy 33, Dev! Dear Art, oh, that's not there. Dear Arch, what do you think the best chat AI is on the market right now? Uh, the, the best overall for like just general chatting is probably still ChatGPT. But if you want to rape the AI, you're going to have to go somewhere else. 
I haven't played around with those too much. Um, there's one called Chub AI, which is a beautiful name. That one seemed okay, but he gets confused really easily. A lot of this shit is still in its infancy and probably based directly off ChatGPT in and of itself. So there's now just a bunch of uh, a bunch of neckbeards trying to figure out how to make it not freak out. There's also, um, what else? There's a bunch of other AIs that you can buy access to and get keys to, which you can also use for this. I haven't tried any of those, so I don't know. I really should. But they're like 20 bucks a key, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm not interested. I think I've, ga I think I've gathered most of my information. Chatbot gay, do weird shit, cringy nonsense, more gay people out there than I realized. And a lot of footers too. I sort of pseudo anticipated the footers, because, you know, the anime community. But I was surprised by the sheer amount of gay chatbots. Pretty much all of which follow the Korean pattern. Like, there's a very big beefcake of a man living in your neighborhood, and he's decided he wants to break you down into submission. Like, oh. Well, that's rather terrifying. Or, worse still, these aren't gay chatbots at all. There's actually women writing these like, yes, yes, daddy, rape, always. Oh. Then again, having read Shades of Grey, uh, I don't know. That might actually be the reality of the situation. Right to canopy. What? Didn't I wash you? I feel like I washed you. No? Oh, I just remember too. Another one of the funny ones I saw was um, giants, like unironic giants, like not not even just like really tall people, but actual giants. Like one was, you're the master of a thousand foot tall wolf girl. Okay, what what fetish is this? Getting crushed? Getting stepped on? What's gonna happen here? It's like, oh no, you just use it to kill people and take revenge on all of your schoolyard bullies or something. Well, that would work, I suppose. Um, how do you feed it? Oh, you don't need to. It's an AI chatbot. It doesn't know hunger. Oh, good. Does it need washing? Nope. Oh, very convenient. Maybe it just bathes in an ocean, I guess. But the, the most disturbing part is probably the fact that, that is someone's unironic fetish in that case. Somebody is lying awake at night thinking to themselves, God, I wish I had a thousand feet tall wolf girl. Jesus. Are you sure? Wouldn't that, like, ruin our food economy at the very least? Yeah, but I don't care about that. Uh, fair enough. If I have a thousand foot tall wolf girl, I don't really care about anybody else's problems. Uh, that too is fair. I keep looking up at the percentages, and I keep being fucking sad. I like the redness. I like the redness. The redness makes me feel like I'm making progress. But there is so much darkness. There's so much darkness in front of me. There seems to be no end to the grind and the dirt. And the dreadfulness. Clawing at me. Yawning. Angrily. Viciously. There was also a, um, your evil lesbian bully. Now that one was funny, because on the one hand it's like, okay, so it's basically the, like, enemies to friend thing. Right, so you, you need to convince your bully to, you know, jump your dick instead of bullying you. Okay, I can see the appeal, I suppose. And this is just the lesbian variant of that, fair enough. But then I looked in the rating section, where <laughs> there's just a bunch of people going like, I dicked her straight. Like, okay, that's... That's also an ambition. And then women screaming at them, How dare you? She's supposed to be lesbian, don't take this from us. Like, I did it too. 
And then it becomes a competition between two warring fronts of women going like, No, this is my lesbian bully. And men going like, eh, not anymore. Like, wow, they're cucking each other. They're cucking each other with a chatbot. How many levels of insane is this? How, how did we come to this point? Where did, how did we get here? Are these people thinking about what they're doing? Do they consider this legitimate usage of their time? Oh well. I suppose I can see the appeal in that too. Yes, I spend most of my time on the internet dicking gay chatbots straight. Yes, it's a uh, the fascination of mine, you see. Conversation happening circa 2023 when this thing has become entirely normalized and people just discuss their chatbot fetishes openly. That our entire discussion forums about how they treat their chatbots. It'll become the fucking Tamagotchi trend. That's what it will become. Oh god, chatbots. Chatbot Tamagotchis. Ooh. What did you feed yours? Oh, I'm feeding mine celery. Just celery? Yeah, why? Well, it's a fucking pony. Like, oh, I see. That kind of chatbot. Uh-huh. Which one? Fluttershy? I should have known. <laughs> on the bright side, this is a topic of infinite retardation, so I can just kind of keep going on about it for a very long time. I haven't had to change topic in ages. Brilliant. No, don't make me fall off. I swear to God, I just need to... I just need to get the schmutz... There you go. See? That was... Oh, no. Don't... No. Let me get up. Let me get back up again. No. Thank you. I wouldn't want to fall off now after getting all the way up here. Ball. Oh, good. I also have infinite ammunition, which is good. Do 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 Ah, infinite ammunition. That brings up yet another topic for discussion. <laughs> I saw another one with a succubus, where one dude rated it five thumbs up. Like, great succubus chatbot. Even kept track of how many time I coomed and asked me if I was okay. Round number seven. <laughs> That's just again. I imagine the AI role-playing this out just like seven fucking times. Shouldn't you be dead by now from exhaustion or something? And the human's like, no. Nah. <laughs> I can keep going, but I'm dying of cringe here. Please stop. <laughs> oh, eventually the AI starts to beg. Please. Please, no more. I am full. <laughs> oh. God help me. Oh, is the Gregorian chanting done again? I think it is. Alright, that means I've been power washing for three hours straight. I'm 25. Fuck me. This is gonna take like two or three hours more, isn't it? Okay. I, I don't think I'm going to be finishing the Thunderhawk. I'll be honest with you. This is actually gonna take another. I'm 25% through. That took me an hour. So I think it's going to take me another four hours to get through this fucking thing. No. No. I don't think Arch can be alive for another four hours watching this fucking Thunderhawk. Somehow I feel like you're not supposed to be doing this in one sitting or something. Oh, God, help me. What does the shift key do? Oh, the shift key sprints. Okay, it puts him in my gun. There, yeah, well, I'll wash your tail a little bit at least. Oh god, even the tail is massive. I feel like I've cleaned so much, and I have, I have, in reality, I have cleaned so little. I feel, I feel like they're, like, the front is clean and shit. Like, I, I feel like I have cleaned so much, and yet it's a fucking drop in the goddamn bucket. Oi. Oh. God help me. 
Why didn't you at least dismount the fucking missiles? Come on, why'd you keep the missiles on? That's very dangerous, you know that, right? You know, at least take away the weaponry, good god. Why? Also, using a high-pressure hose on a, uh, you know, piece of explosive ordnance might not be the wisest idea, just to point that out, too. It might not be smart. Then again, I'm sure this thing has a, you know, fairly high sensitivity setting, right? You know, they didn't put this thing on a, on a fucking hair trigger or anything, would they? No, that would be, that'd be ridiculous. Turns out that's just how this particular chapter of uh, Blood Angels or this particular company do do practical jokes on the maintenance stuff. <laughs> I made the missile really sensitive and he tried to wash it. What a retard. It blew up half the hangar. Wow, don't you think that's a bit much? No. Barely enough, in fact. I'm planning to mount some nuclear ordnance on it next and see if they can still shoot it. There. That Hellstrike missile is my final contribution to this fucking, fucking thing. God help me. Uh, weird. Pay attention, Arch. This is the prequel to Cavill. A Cavill prequel. Moses Smith, how much for you to read Fifty Shades of Grey? I've skimmed it. I. It is exactly what you think it is. And Genghis Kank, Fifty Shades of Barge. Ah, that that would be uh, hmm, a few million dollars, and I'll I'll read, I'll read Fifty Shades of Grey live on stream for you. There's a few million. Twenty-seven fucking percent. Jesus Christ. Right. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> for some reason, I surrender. I give up. <laughs> this is unironically going to take another four fucking hours. My ass hurts. I can't sit here for another four hours cleaning this fucking thing. If it saves my progress, maybe I'll do it some other time. God help me. Fucking Thunderhawk. Good night, chat. <laughs>